Okay, so welcome to Wednesday, October 12th, Community Safety and Social Justice Committee meeting pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so again, thank you and welcome to everyone. Um, we have public comment uh, time right now. Wait one yeah. sec. Um, do we yeah. have the agenda up? I never even I never oh. received the, a copy of the agenda and all of those things. Oh, was were those that sent out? Yeah, let's see. Okay, yeah, I never got one. I think I saw something. Right. Yeah, let me see if I have but it. But at least if we can have it up. Yeah, there, the yeah, up. right. Let's see, hopefully. Nope, that's not it. One moment. I have it up just trying to figure out which <laughs> which on my desktop it is. So just give me a moment. So many windows. Okay. All right. So the meeting packet, I'll just, yeah, scroll yeah. through it like that. Yeah, I never got it. I just went through my, my things again. So okay. that might be something to visit like how are we to make sure that folks have the meeting packet you know yeah um, so i i this is still the wrong thing one go ahead and oh there it is finally <laughs> right so I, I i think that things have um not been running as smoothly because uh, jen's been um, away and so angela and i have been splitting the responsibilities so i will take responsibility for the packet uh, not being sent out, but I thought that Angela had sent out a link to the meeting and the packet to everyone. Um, but I'm sure that that's, you know, that that was an error on our part if it did not reach you. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is the meeting agenda, at least some of it. I can scroll down a bit more. There we are. Right now, the only we're thing I'm seeing, seeing it, on it. Yeah, yeah it's we're not just seeing it. Joined by phone. That's what we're seeing. Right. Oh, my screen sharing is paused. Sorry. No. Nope. Let's try that again. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Um, so just give you a moment to to see what we uh have <laughs> up for to tonight um let's see so public comment is right now and since i am showing the agenda i can't go back easily to see who is in the audience but i did see that there were 14 i guess and that includes us right so there are nine attendees um and um uh, earl has his hand up for so public comment because he'll be reporting out later right. yeah so no other hands are up but you we can wait a second to see if anyone else has um i don't see any other hands raised for public comment so. okay and just so the public knows we have public comment at the start of the meeting and then we revisit public comment uh, at the end of the meeting. I don't see it listed here in our agenda, but we normally include it. So I'm going to normally include it in this agenda. So just so the public knows, we have public comment now, and then um, before adjourning, we'll have public comment again. Okay, all righty. So no hands up still? No hands up. All righty. So member reports, and that's for our group besides, um, again, Cress will be reporting out and DEI will be reporting out. This is for the members of the CSSJC. 
Allegra, no? Um, I'm just wondering if any, I was unable to attend the Know Your Rights training that was put on this past weekend, but I'm wondering if any members who were there would be able to give a brief update as to how that went. That would be great. Yes, Ms. Pat. So I attended, um, it was on Sunday for an hour and a half or almost two hours. I thought it was very uh, informative for me. Um, we had also like breakout discussion. I, I'm really very impressed that our young people organized this with, you know, with other groups joining. So it was, it was a very robust training and discussion. We didn't make the discussion part in, uh, taped, but the, the training itself was taped. So I really thank the group from Boston that did the training and all the co-sponsors, the Human Rights Commission, POCU, our group, um, um, the fund, MSD fund, and another group that I'm not remembering, but I thought it was worthwhile. Great. Um, is so you say it's recorded? Is that recording going to be available upon request, or are they going to put it up on YouTube? Good question. I I don't know. I don't have answer to that. You know, um, I can reach out to Ames uh, Sunrise Ames Group. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a training that our town should seriously consider inviting that group. They did an awesome job. Great. As an adult myself, I, I learned, you know, one or two things uh, at that training that I, I didn't know before. So not just um, for youth. Yeah. On M M Miranda rights and Mar stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for adults and, and young people, you recommend the training? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any uh, one else from our group? I also attended that, and I'll echo what Ms. Pat was saying, that it definitely is a versatile training, and everybody can hear me? Now, now we, we can. can. Now we can hear you. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I was just going to say that I'll echo what Ms. Pat was saying, and that um, it was a pretty versatile training for both youth, youth and adults, and everybody involved. Great. And okay. um, as far as another report out the Human Rights Commission is out hosting a Latinx Heritage Month event this Saturday nice. um, on in Kendrick Park at 11 o'clock to three o'clock. So what what should we expect? Is it um, speakers? Uh, is it? Yep, we'll have, we'll have a couple of speakers. We'll have performances, food, um, activities from the school, they'll be putting on um, Loteria and different other types of activities. So it's a family fun event type of deal. Great. Thank you for doing that. And thank you, um, Ms. Pat and Human Rights Commission, Philip, for y'all um, sponsoring and um, doing the, the training. So I guess I'll just chime in too, um, you know, because again, it's, it's our support of our children, which is the ABC uh, walk too is happening mm -hmm. yeah. on Saturday, um, starting around 930 and it goes, um, it's in the town, you know, like the town, what do you guys call that? Right in front of the uh, town hall, <laughs> town common. Mm -hmm. Town common, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, 9.30 a.m. for the walkers and then I think 10.30 or 10 o'clock for the runners. But obviously it's a great program that, it's supporting um, and fundraising. So myself, my son, and a bunch of other folks, obviously, are all going to be there to support the, uh, a better chance uh, program on Saturday. So then, Thanks. if what, since we'll be there, then we can just stay for your. We'll go to Kendrick Park and go to your event, right? Yeah, come on by if you're going to be running or walking. We'll have food. <laughs> exactly. Um, maybe I'll tell I'll tell uh, Tim, my brother, to make an announcement because then you can maybe get a lot of those people to go over yeah. to your event. You know, that'd be great. That's awesome. So Saturday's already planned. Well, there are a few more things happening. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There's more. There's more. It's, it's, you know, you can just start at the ABC block and you can head on down main, whatever the main street is actually called to, um, to Kendrick. Um, so I know actually the teachers union is having a rally um, on the common at 10 to talk about their living wage needs. Um, and then also the 
fire department is having an open house uh, family friendly event. So lots wow. of safety wow. events, lots of community events, lots of social justice events happening this Saturday. That's fabulous. What a, what a town. What a yeah. town. <laughs> good any, stuff. Good stuff. Happening. Good stuff. In, any others? Okay. Well, thank you all for that. And it's it's so good to, to see that the members of the CSSJC are so involved um, in, in the town in that way. So thank you. Okay. So number four on the agenda is Cress. And uh, we have an update from uh, Earl Miller. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm, are you going to invite me to the meeting? Oh, yes, Pam. So Pam's getting the hang of this alone. No worries. No, Earl is in. He, when, when he asked the question, could you guys not hear him? Oh, yeah. So I, I'm going to stop sharing now and let's see. We'll be able to see you, hopefully. Okay. It, I, it does not show me as a participant. I think you're letting me talk from the audience. That's why you don't no, see my video. No, you. Uh, yeah, I, I can. No, hey, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the There's best. Looking. My, my voice is my power anyway. Help. There we go. Yeah. Okay. We still don't see your video, but right. we see that it's you. So there should be a button that either Pamela or Philip. Yay! Can there you yeah. go. Yeah. I did. Yeah. All righty. Uh, there we go. Okay. So. Uh, I can just start with the report. Um, we I got some notes from folks to address, I think, most of the, the questions folks had. So I can just go through that and you can stop me when there's a question. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um, so this report is from September 6th to September 30th. Um, we're still collecting some data from the last couple of weeks and we're, we're looking to improve our process. So our first month, our total engagements were 1,788. Our first week were 507 engagements um, between Hampshire College's new student orientation, uh, meeting all the departments, going to all the schools, and then walking downtown to all the businesses, uh, as well as just greeting folks. Uh, we really made an effort that first week to be as, as out as we could. Uh, could second, and so yep. because you're, you're explaining this and you're going fairly quickly, when you talk about engagements, you're talking about uh, going to meet people in the community. Is that correct? Nope, talking about uh, calls, going to see folks, um, kind of all the ways in which we see people. We'll get more into the specific type of calls. Okay, below. what engagement is? That's what I was trying to understand. Yep. Thank you. It's a, it's a wide net. Okay. Um, so our second week, uh, we saw 637 folks uh, from the block party, the high school fire, um, and the folks we engaged with around that. Uh, we had a call to Atkins, uh, as well as that week, we really started to see a pickup in some mental health engagement. Third week was 320 engagements. Uh, our big uh, outside of our regular calls was a UMass safety event. Our fourth week was 324 with a forage cul-de-sac tabling. Um, it's important to note with those numbers, those first two weeks were students coming back. And so we really did make an effort to meet them as they arrived in town. Um, Amherst residents served, so this is individual calls. Um, obviously, a call might involve more than one person is 278. Um, and we had one call from dispatch. Um, and I can get deeper into that call uh, as we move down. Um, the issue with dispatch is a technical one. Um, we're still figuring out the mechanics of getting into the system. Um, but, you know, dispatch is identifying calls for us. So, so as that comes up, uh, notable interactions with businesses. We had a really uh, nice engagement with the typewriter store downtown, uh, working collaboratively with the bid. Uh, we were at the, the mobile market at Mill River, um, and then we did some conflict de-escalation for some, some local businesses. Um, notable interactions with, uh, with other places in the town. Uh, the Survival Center was incredibly helpful in one issue we had um, from a single parent. I'll get more into that call below, um, but I just want to highlight that the Survival Center has been incredibly responsive to us. Um, the Amherst High School fire, we were asked to be there by the fire department, so appreciation for Chief Nelson for thinking of us. Um, we were engaged uh, with the library around a bullying incident, um, and then we were able to support Craig's door around a, an unfortunate uh, event that they happened that I'm not able to share much more on. Um, our types of calls right now, um, we're doing a fair amount of wellness checks. 
um, mostly for seniors, uh, but we have had a couple where parents of students who've arrived in town have been concerned. Um, generally, those are just uh, a young person. At one was at the Big E. Um, mental health calls, um, those are being driven often by neighborhoods. So we're finding that when we come in in the morning, uh, we, we often have one or two neighbors from different parts of town uh, waiting for us, asking us to come support a neighbor. Uh, we're always glad to go do that. Um, just to clarify, one piece of the mental health calls that we, we currently aren't able to take are calls that might result in a section 12. Uh, we do not have the legal authority, uh, nor frankly do we think it would be within our bailiwick to be removing people forcibly from the community under any circumstances. Um, Nonviolent school calls. Th this is just a list of calls. I'll, I'll kind of stop if we've taken some nonviolent school calls. The fire was an example of that. Non trespass vagrancy. Actually, at the end of the business today, we were able to support uh, some folks who were were struggling to leave a spot downtown and causing some some issues, and we're experiencing some issues, and so we were able to mediate that. Um, community engagement. Obviously, we want to make sure we're, we're continuing to get our name out. Uh, assist the fire department assist other PDs um, where we have a good working relationship with the uh, Amherst College PD, with the UMass PD. Um, we haven't had to deploy that outside of one situation in which we um, went to provide someone, a town resident who was uh, challenged on campus with some additional resources. Um, assist citizen, um, I would say this is probably our biggest call if you kind of combine that with the wellness checks right now. Assist business, this includes town departments. Crest citizen transport, um, this mostly comes up. There are some folks with some, uh, an example, we, we helped the gentleman get to the VA to do his orientation for them to get signed up for benefits. Uh, we've taken people to Social Security, grocery shopping, those sorts of things. Uh, administrative, um, that's when anytime I go on a call, just so folks know where we are. Um, and then follow up, which I just want to highlight that one of the real key components of what we're doing is the ability to follow up. So not just to engage with someone in a difficult moment, but to come back the next day. Uh, we currently have four or five people who we're seeing on, uh, probably two who we're seeing on a daily basis. The other three we're seeing once a week. Uh, we consider that some of our, uh, our limited case management ability. Uh, and then miscellaneous calls as determined by dispatch. Mike Curtin has been a part of this process since the implementation committee. Um, and so he's really uh, looking for calls that might not neatly fit into one of those, but still might uh, result in us uh, going out. What you won't see is noise complaints. Uh, and I know that that is a, a pain point for folks. Um, I just want folks to know that that's not a never thing. Um, we anticipate being able to start taking some noise complaints in January. Um, it's really actually a capacity issue. Um, taking noise complaints on while the schools are in session would really be a challenge as far as training folks. Um, there isn't a nice ramp up. Um, so we're thinking that if starting in January will allow us to have a month where students aren't on campus um, for us to really kind of scale up to that. Um, our current hours are nine to five Monday through Friday. Those also will change in January and we will go from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Monday through Sunday. Um, part of that is staffing. The ability to supervise past, P to past 10 p.m. Is, uh, is limited right now. Um, so this is kind of the upward bounds of what we can do given our, our current capacity. Um, and I, I know that that is unsatisfying. If there was a way around that, I, I promise I would, I would do it. Um, so that's, that's our goal, um, is the second week, January 7th, which is uh, Saturday, um, is when we intend to start these new uh, hours. Um, responders will be working four 10 hour shifts. Um, with three days off uh, on a rotating basis in which all responders are in on Fridays. Uh, so that allows us to train and do in services. Um, and we know that training is a really key component. Um, we're in really active talks with uh, other municipalities. So we had a meeting with Denver last week. Uh, it was really nice. Their operations director, her sister went to UMass Amherst. So she knew the town a little bit, which was always fun. Um, we're looking um, to really network with those other towns, uh, including Minneapolis, Albuquerque, Dayton, um, and Seattle, obviously, around um, a responder exchange program so that we can start to really uh, allow them to see what the work looks like in other areas um, and what sort of really impressive programming other folks are doing. Um, it's a real learning collaborative and, and we're lucky to be a part of it. Um, a couple more things. Uh, racial data is something that we're collecting currently, uh, but we don't have, one of the things we're struggling with is folks don't, there often isn't a neat space to ask folks for it. 
Um, so we're collecting that data much easier from folks who we have ongoing engagement with. We're just finding that today being a good example, the folks we met with were in distress um, and we don't want to get into a game of guessing people's racial identity because we we just don't believe that's fair. So um, certainly we're, we're working right now. Minneapolis has a really imp impressive program around uh, collecting racial data in which uh, they have tablets with them where they ask people to answer some data that so the responder would never see it. It automatically is um, their identifying data is removed and it's just collected. Um, that's worked with them, particularly in their Somali population. So we're, we're looking at that as a way to collect that. Um, community outreach efforts. Um, one of the really nice ways to meet seniors in town has been helping out with the Meals on Wheels the seniors do. We also find that to be a really nice contact point for if there needs to be wellness checks. Um, an example of that is in the last two weeks, um, we dropped off meals on a Friday. When we showed up the next workday, the meal was still there. That cued us up that we needed to identify where that person was. Thankfully, both people had just one person we had really been working to get into a nursing home. He is in that nursing home now. Uh, the other person had unfortunately had a fall, but they are safe. Um, and we did provide some uh, some outreach to the hospital with them. Um, and Whalen has been really helpful. The folks there have been really kind to us. Um, and particularly a lot of the folks there who were formerly homeless have been offering us lots of techniques on where are people staying at this time of the year, how to approach them in a way that's meaningful for them. Um, Upstream regular outreach is something we really want to make kind of our own. Um, so we're working with the vet folks, uh, DMH, DDS, basically anybody who does this work. We had our, our first social services meeting last week. Um, we had about 13 people there. So a good turnout um, from both state, local and regional supports. And we anticipate that being a monthly meeting in an ongoing way. Um, department updates, we have one responder position open. Um, we're being really thoughtful about filling that position. Um, we believe we built a really good culture. There's a, a sense of trust among the responders. So making sure that we find someone who can hold to our values um, and understands that, you know, unarmed work doesn't mean unskilled or untalented, um, which is a really nuanced uh, way to think about it. Uh, oftentimes people think of the weapon as a tool as opposed to being unarmed as a tool in and of itself. Um, we hired an implementation manager. She's in the audience today. Her name is Kate Shapiro. Uh, she comes to us from the Department of Mental Health. She was a case manager in Hampshire County. She is familiar with many of the folks we are currently working with um, and has existing relationships with them. Um, she's already started to write grants. Um, we're looking to join a community of learning uh, with some other municipalities in addition to the Harvard Kennedy School community we already participate in. Um, really, we're finding that we get better much quicker when we're able to, to discuss things with our counterparts and learn from their mistakes as opposed to making them all ourselves. Um, and we are in the final stages of establishing an MOU with the Amherst schools. Um, that was something that the school board requested. I actually just want to appreciate them for asking some really, really good questions um, that, you know, we, we, we think we have some answers to, but we will be meeting with that school board again before we finalize it to, to hear their feedback again. So that is kind of the report piece. If you're interested, I'd love to give you a couple case um, cases we've had just so you can kind of see what the work is looking like. Um, so I know this is a lot of information quickly. We tried to make it slower, but there isn't really a way to explain what we're doing very slowly. It's it's the pace of it is pretty fast. So we're needing to make shifts very regularly. So real, I'd love to hear that, but I want to also make space for our members in case they have questions of what you've presented thus far. Absolutely. So I see Ms. Pat's hand is up and Deb. So Ms. Pat. So all thank you so much um, for the presentation. I am excited that, you know, Chris is off the ground running and I like you know, what I heard tonight, um, it kind of uh, mirror um, some of what CSWG had envisioned. Um, I have some questions for you. And that is in terms of staffing, I mean, staffing shortage is nationwide. I am struggling too in my company. So I get that. When you say nine to five currently, 
how many staff are on duty at the same time? Do you have, you know, I want to know more about that. Yep. I also have comment on the MOU with the school committee. That's the area that CSWG, we really don't want, like, we didn't discuss resource officers in yep. our school. Yep. So um, I, I can answer those two questions, or yes, I answer those two please. questions. So yeah, yes, with, with staffing, we've been really, really fortunate. Um, part of the strategy when I first came on was, uh, Deb, the event you all did at Mill River uh, and Philip. that was a huge, we actually hired two people off of just going there that day, the Groff Park event. We're finding that um, we're really look, looking for kind of enthusiastic consent from folks. We don't want people who are just looking for a job. This won't be very fun for them. Um, we're looking for folks who are committed to the, the value. So um, we have been really served by community members actually speaking to folks they know about the work, um, introducing folk, us to folks. Actually, uh, Deb and Philip, uh, one of our one of the responders who I think is maybe our most unusual candidate, but has shown just some real brilliance is, is Kenneth Michael, who we, we met there at the Mill River event. Um, not a traditional background, but has just shown such a natural talent for working with folks and particularly for, for folks of color who I think find him to just be a very genuine person. So um, we're, we're really recruiting as hard as we can. We're working with um, all of the, the mass hire centers. Um, we've gone to the universities. Um, we will be presenting at HCC and GCC and we're really um, kind of full press. Um, we're finding this last position harder to fill because we don't have two months of training after it so we really don't have the ability to hire someone super early in their learning curve at this point because they'll need to to be in the work a little sooner so um we've, we've worked with the fire department to develop a training program that I'm, I'm really proud of that involves a person shadowing the teams um as far as our our regular day-to-day -day scheduling um the way we have it right now is two teams are out doing engagement they're either in a neighborhood talking to folks they're at a business they're at the survival center they're at a, they're with people um kind of talking about the program eliciting feedback and just meeting folks and we have found that that's been a real driver for us just the kind of visibility um, and then we have one team that's ready to deploy that's in the office. Um, all those teams that are in the field are also able to deploy. So for example, the high school fire, we deployed two teams, um, recognizing that we needed to, to provide as much resources as we could. Um, and so that's that's our current makeup. Um, there are everybody, like, like most public safety departments, everybody has kind of multiple responsibilities. So we have to carve out some time for report writing, um, which, which takes a fair amount of energy and time. Um, we also have to really, as we're going out with folks and they're seeing things, we're reinforcing the training they've seen. Um, so we have all of our trainers on contracts for executive coaching if we need to bring them back, particularly with motivational interviewing. We found that to be really important. Um, with the schools, I just want to say, and, and we said this in the meeting with them, we don't have any intention of being school resource officers. We are talking about time limited um, individual circumstances. So an example that happened before the uh, well, school year ended last year was there was an, a dispute at a bus stop. Um, one of the parents felt uncomfortable with their kid going on the bus. And if if, uh, and what the school could deploy kind of was limited. So the, the child would have missed the last week of school. Um, me and Kat Newman, our program assistant, made a decision to, you know, with the with the parents, uh, not just consent, but but gratitude um, to transport the kid to school every day so that they could finish up the school year. We were requested by Derek Shea. Um, and it was a nice collaborative process. We didn't solve the problem, but we did get folks to the end of the year. Um, and we still are, are in touch with that family. We were able to help them get into summer camps and some other things. So that contact was more with the parent. And what we see our role at the school is is, is likely more serving parents who are struggling with, with either finding resources for the child or frankly, their own mental health, which is a challenge for many parents in town these days so uh, the MOU is speaks to that um, we we don't intend to replicate law enforcement in the big things or the small things okay thank you thank thanks you Pat. very much okay uh Deb all right thanks Earl for that um, report obviously you all are doing a lot which I'm really excited to hear about um I guess I just need some you know more clarification on some of the things that that you shared um, and obviously making some points in, in, in regards to it. Um, so one of the things you, you began talking about the racial data, but then you kind of, you know, talked about some other things. So do you have some data in terms of like, who are the people who are using this the most so that we can get a sense? 
Yeah, we have it. It's not, uh, it is not ready for display right now. What I would say is we're seeing, you know, of the six calls we have, which are really kind of calls that required real follow-up that would have been 911 calls, um, four of the six were people of color. Okay. And, um, and then, so how are these calls coming in, I guess, right? Because obviously when, you know, we were doing, when we were conceptualizing the CSWG, we are conceptualizing them being able to have direct um, co communication with, you know, with, um, what is it, with Crest, right? And for them to be able to get dispatched and things like that. So I guess, how is it, how, how are they able to, you know, how do they know that you all are there? How do they uh, get in touch with you all? Yeah, that's a great question. It's one that we we gra grappled with and probably didn't solve until we were about three days in. It was pretty touch and go for a second. Um, so the way it works right now is um, probably the easiest one is folks show up through the bank center um, and they just show up for an in-person kind of uh, unscheduled consult. We we always try to have someone in the office for that. There have been maybe three days in the six weeks we've been out where we've had everybody deployed simultaneously. Uh, we try to avoid that unless absolutely necessary. Um, so I have a phone, the admin folks have a phone, and then each responder team has a phone that they can take calls in directly. Um, the idea being that we have a, a responder who speaks Spanish. Folks want to speak directly to him. Um, they have a we have a shared voicemail, and then each response team has their own voicemail that folks can call. Um, everybody's emails are set up. Um, and frankly, I, I I think you know I don't know if it's a pat on the back or something I'll live to regret, but I think my cell phone number has circulated pretty widely. So that is uh that is actually a big driver of things. Um, you know, the survival center, someone who is in the who's dealing with something will call me directly, um, and we'll send a team over there. Um, and and so that's that's the main mechanism right now. We're working to set up an online uh, place where people could send in, you know, for, for issues that don't require an immediate response, more kind of quality of life uh, challenges with neighbors where folks can send things in and virtually uh, send them in through through email um, and glad to take any other uh, thoughts on how folks might suggest that we, we really what well, one of the things we're realizing is there's no there's no there's no there's no problem of having too too many doors. We want folks to be able to get us any way they can. Um, and one of the ways that I'm glad that's really only been the last two weeks is folks stopping responders on the street to ask them to intervene in something. That's um, that's something I hope will will become a bigger driver that folks just recognize us and invite us in that way. Um, but it's really just started. Did that answer your um, question? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I know it's still in process. Obviously, you know, this is going to be a continual conversation. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to, to talk about that because one of the things too, and, and that'll be good to capture in the data would be in terms of folks like, you know, you just mentioned that there's someone that obviously speaks Spanish, but we know that there's a variety of different languages. So how are we outreaching to uh, our populations that speak all the different languages that, that we speak, right? Um, so how are we outreaching to them so that we know that they know about press and that they feel comfortable to utilize press? Um, so are we putting out information in different mediums and, and, and ways? Um, and we know, you know, obviously online component, that would be great, but we know that a lot of that population that we're trying to reach, which are the marginalized population, which are the ones that are, are not going to be trusting really of Crest, right, until you build a relationship, are going to be the ones that are going to really want to know and want to be able to communicate in their own language to be able to connect to Crest. So um, any ideas in terms of that, how, how that's going to take place? Yeah, so two to three days a week, they're they're going into neighborhoods and just speaking to folks when they're outside. That's something we think will continue on permanently um, for folks who don't have phones. Or we're finally we're meeting a lot of folks who are aren't just ha homeless but housing insecure, right? If you're struggling to pay your rent, the phone goes before the rent does. Um, mm -hmm. And so being out there, um, you know, we're, we're one of the things we're grappling with is is social media and whether or not that's a thing we should do or shouldn't do. I think there's big pros and there's big cons. I'd really be interested in what what the group thinks of that um and it's it's actually a, a really divided thing uh, nationally some do it and find it really helpful some do it and find it to be onerous some don't do it and and just kind of don't have any info so um i think that's one venue that probably could be big uh but i worry about you know it's just it's an it's an inartful form yeah yeah even though like you said right it is the way that that a lot of people are using it, especially our young people and especially if we want to outreach the young people that may need crest 
um, it would be a, a good way to at least, um, you know, not to say you're going to be yeah. on all the platforms, but maybe start on one of the platforms that the young people are on and kind of test it, do like a pilot uh, phase to kind of see how it goes and then kind of take it from there. Uh, but I think with this day and age, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any way around it, right? Not yeah. not to use social media. It's just yeah. how do we use it uh, to the best way possible to to really engage in, and be able to get people to, to come on board. We're getting a um, nice trickle of young people just by having candy in the office. Um, <laughs> so it's just like the candy, candy people, candy man, candy. Gotta woman, feed them. Candy, candy <laughs> uh, you know. Um, exactly. Um, but two really last quick ones is around um, da, 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 vehicles, um, you know, whether you all have vehicles, um, because I know that that was either coming or something like that. And then lastly, so I'll let you answer that. But lastly, I am glad to hear that you are going to ramp up and, and hopefully be able to take in noise complaints because um, that was part of what um, CSWG was interested in. Is that anything that was uh, non, you know, violent, non-criminal um, that Crest would um, take care of and noise complaints will fall into that bailiwick? I mean, I do understand that obviously that might be a big chunk, of, you know, to take in. However, um, hopefully you all will figure that out so that, um, you know, uh, you can get to that point to, to address them. To yeah, address I, I want to be super clear. I think my folks can handle it. We we got very lucky. I think the, the talent of the folks we have, uh, I would put my team against any team in the country in terms of um, the kind of depth of compassion they have. Our first call lasted five hours. Um, and they sat in someone's living room and just listened to a lot of pain, a lot of uh, a black family struggling with aging at home, dealing with lots of systemic issues. Um, and we were able to resolve those, but that's not the thing I'm most proud of. The thing I'm most proud of is that five hours that they sat there and they gave them every bit of attention they wanted until they were done. Uh, the vehicles um, are actually, uh, the issue is more in the market, uh, being able to get procure them off of the state list. Um, we are currently actively outreaching um, fiscal already outreached to I believe over 40 uh, car lots uh, we're starting to reach out to car lots on the other side of Boston um, this is an issue kind of nationally with just mm -hmm. that that uh, backup uh, currently we're using the town car the electric vehicle um, and the senior center is allowing us to use a van which has been really helpful um, in getting groceries for folks so we are mobile our folks are not in their own cars traveling they are in cars that say Amherst um, and as soon as we're able to procure the cars, uh, the listed, the state list had told us that we, we should expect them around November. Um, I, I wouldn't bet a ton on that, but, uh, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can. And I just want to appreciate Sean Mangano, who has spent a lot of his time and other folks time there, uh, aggressively pursuing vehicles. We know, uh, just for our, even our defibrillators, our laptops, until we get vehicles that we own, um, we're not able to really use those resources. So it, um, it is a big step for us but it's, it's the market right now that's holding us back. Okay. The funding well, is you. there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions or, or follow-ups and um, it's good to hear that the phones are working. So it sounds like the first three days had to do with the, the phone issue um that i was particularly concerned about in calling amherst media and then it would end up going to uh cress so that has been cleared yes it was cleared the same day okay great well it took a couple of days because i got a phone call from one of the tech people to actually we went through the the different numbers so the, i all i know is the call the call stopped coming to us that day yeah as far as where it ended yeah. up in the ether um, yeah so uh glad to hear that and then the responder opening the responder opening is due to what uh a personnel issue that i'm not able to discuss oh okay so someone left yeah Oh, okay. So that so that's interesting. I'm not interested in the personnel issue, yeah. but I am interested in is there a process in place that as people perhaps exit for whatever reason, that there's uh, some type of survey, an exit survey that occurs so we can learn from it? Yeah. Um, HR uh, would be responsible for that. I can check in with them. Please do. Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. 
because I think it's important, all of what you've uh, related in terms of the, the calls, the amount and the processes, and that you are working with other peer groups, you know, and learning from them and they in turn learning from you, I think uh, putting things in place like that uh, now at the beginning would be really important. Yeah. So we can learn from folks, you know, it, it, if for whatever reason that they exit, you know, this type of work. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna reiterate the issue, the ongoing issue of, of language uh, diversity and translation in the town um, for town services. Uh, Cape Verdean Portuguese, you know, uh, is, is definitely needed. Looking at our population, Khmer, Cambo for Cambodian com communities. So I know it's hard to, you know, do everything, but I hope your, your eye is on that in terms of uh, in the future, putting those things in place. Yeah, yeah we've recently interviewed for the position and it's tricky, uh, but we, we are aggressively per, uh, pursuing folks in communities that speak uh, diverse languages that are not represented. Um, it's it's always gonna be a little bit of a challenge with the size of our team, um, but that is something uh, along with uh, all the types of diversity, but language being a key one, um, particularly in uh, Cape Verdean communities and then uh, communities that speak Chinese dialects, which are just folks who have engaged with us and we've struggled. Uh, we've been able to use some technology, but it isn't the same thing as someone who understands what we do speak in your language. Language. So sure, yeah. and that it would be appropriate, such as the Cape Verdean community for Criollo. So if you um, know folks, please encourage them to apply. I will meet with them ahead of time. Okay. I, 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 I'm limited in my recruitment, but I'll go as hard as I can. All right. Well, uh, just to, to keep that in mind, and we'll put the word out. Um, and then I just want to make sure I heard this correctly. So right now there's uh calls end at 10 p.m. Mm -mm. But mm -mm. No, so that's not at 10 p.m. When right. when do you uh, right. when are calls ending or when do you all end? What 5 time? Is it? 5 p.m. right now. 5 p.m. OK, yes. and, but there is a plan to have it go until 10 p.m. January 7th. OK, There's all a day. right. OK, great. And I just this is I just want to highlight once a month. It'll start twice a month. We have a call type meeting mm -hmm. with the PD fire department and dispatch as well as the town manager's office. Uh, and Pamela, and in those meetings, that's where we've come up with this plan for January 7th, that that'll be the day where we uh, we feel prepared to move to that next step. Great. And then lastly, in terms of social media, for it, I think that's critical for younger, um, younger people who are in need. Um, that's how they communicate uh, through messenger, through you know, their DMs or whatever. Obviously I'm an old fogey, so I'm not even Me saying too. it right, but but I do, I am aware that that's how they communicate. So just like you have folks hired to, you know, answer uh, the phone, um, I think it would be critically important to have someone hired to just work the social media, right? So um, that's, that's all I have to say, uh, Philip. I think the one girl was before me. Oh, I didn't see. I can't. I can't see. I'm sorry. Who was uh, before you? I think it might have been me. Oh, hey! I can't <laughs> see you on my screen. I'm so sorry. My apologies. Go ahead, Allegra. Um, let's see. I had a few things. First of all, again, thank you for bringing us all this information. And I really do hope that after we've answered or asked all of our questions, you will share an anecdote or two, because I, I do think that that helps um, kind of give a face or not a face, but like an idea of what's what the day to day work can look like. Um, first, I wanted to just clarify, um, is there do you have like informational like pamphlets or anything that has phone numbers and is that something that this committee could get if if so yeah we have a we have 
think 800 um, cards with our number name on it and they have a lollipop attached to them. Idea being, <laughs> hey, even if you don't want the number, take the lollipop, maybe the number will come in handy later. Um, we're really, we're working now on some orders for, we're looking at Dayton particularly. They have lots of small flyers um, that have resources on them, their number. And they have one that I really like, which just says, if you need us call. Um, the idea being, you know, too much information sometimes can be a barrier. So just, and it has that in multiple languages so that, <laughs> that multiple folks can get it. So um, that's a real focus for us right now. Um, Kat Newman, our program assistant is engaging with different vendors throughout the area um, to try to find things that'll, that'll fit our need. Um, and we intend to have those uh, widely dispersed before the end of the year, before we, we shift to that 10 PM schedule. Um, and I think kind of to piggyback off of what Dee was saying, um, both about language and social media, I, I feel that maybe social media would be a way to get some other language capacity out there as well, because the technology somehow exists to translate things. I hired some people under 30, so I'll, I, I will trust them to figure <laughs> it out. I, I'm just as confused with it all, but I do, I, you know, the, the thing I know is that we want to have as many doorways to Crest as there can be for folks. So um, that that's really important. So we will be doing that. And I think just in terms of kind of even saying, you know, hey, we're out at the, you know, mobile market here, come meet us or we're, you know, we're going to the community day at Mill River, like, you know. Yeah, one of the things we're planning to do is actually to put a table on the common one day and just have responders kind of take shifts over there so people can just drop in and meet them. So thank you. Thank you. Really, really great and creative um, ideas. Um, thank you. Um, Philip. I just have a quick, um, just maybe advice or whatever it is um, for recruitment, but uh, I don't know if you've reached out to Lev. I know some survival center participants would be great in that role if they're interested in that, as well as uh, the various events that we have going on in town this Saturday. I don't know if you all are planning. Oh, on yeah. Oh, we're there. We're, we're, at, we're at multiple <laughs> ones at a point. You, I think you'll see me probably hopefully not too sweaty, but everywhere. Um, and we'll have some responders on. I just want to add, we will also, uh, the only exemption to our schedule is we will be working ha uh, Halloween weekend. We will have responders throughout town. Uh, we, we have a very exciting trunk or treat uh, presentation planned for all of you. So, so uh, yeah, but the, and to, to all of you's credit, going to those events has really been where we've met the people who have been most committed to the work. And one of the things I'm very proud of is eight of our 10, uh, actually now nine of our 11 folks have lived, worked, or grew up in Amherst. So we have a lot of folks who are culturally competent to the area, which is which has borne fruit for us all the time. Also, um, going on to the language and information, if you guys, what program? What Phillips, program? say that again. We did, we missed the first part. I was saying that I don't know what program you use or what technology you use, but um, what the center uses, we use Language um, Helpline, which does multiple translations, and that's uh, in like kind of you call, and then you say I need such and such language, and then they get someone on the phone, so then that way someone can speak to another individual in their native language. Thank you. That's that's super helpful. I yeah. think we've been using some combination of <laughs> Google Translate. And then, you know, one of the things we really hope to avoid but have had to is minor children translating for folks. We know that that is uh, an unfair burden to put on those young folks. Um, so thank you for that resource. I think it'll help us not do that at all. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and then I'm interested to listen into some anecdotes. I have been privy. I'm, I'm interested in listening to some of the um, calls you've been responding to. I've been privy to your responders and I just do have to say that they are really great. That's, That's good to know. It's my dog, Coco, sorry. <laughs> Philip, that was language outline. Language helpline. Thank I got you. It. It's like, <laughs> don't worry, I, I'm on okay. it. Okay, <laughs> all right, great. All right, anyone, oh, Miss Pat and then Okay, I know we have a full ag agenda, but um, it, will there be a dedicated 
phone number for Chris in the future? Are we going to have a debate? Um, are we going to have dispatch center for Chris, or is it still going to be going through the you know what we currently have? What is the future plan? So the answer to that is uh, yes to the first part. Um, the dedicated number is four one three two five nine. 3370. Um, my number is 71. So if you get it wrong by one, you'll you'll still get someone. Um, and the first, I think three or four numbers after that are also folks in our department. Um, as far as dispatch, um, there I've not been privy to any conversations about that. Obviously, it would be a decision in the budgeting process. Um, it isn't something that we would be able to do within our current um, our current structure. So that was going to thank you. That that was going to be my last question. As you know, we're in budget season, and you know part of what we hope is to support you, your department. You know, how can we support you to advocate for um, resources? Because I think you guys started off in a very good uh, way, and I'm excited. Thank you, and thank your staff uh, for the work they're doing. Yeah, they they deserve all the credit. Uh, they are they are wonderful people. Um, I, I you know I I think I hope that we will be ready to go come the start of the next fiscal year. I, I think it would probably be early for me to to kind of advocate publicly before I've had much of an opportunity to do the kind of process stuff. But um, what I wasn't sure of at the beginning of this fiscal year was whether we would be able to you know train people in a way where they could do the job with the fidelity required for us to add any additional steps um i do now feel confident that you know come july we will be able to add components to oversee them um and you know i think our biggest need is pretty clear to see it's uh me supervising 10 people is challenging um not a not a lot of wiggle room and, and it'll require me to to, to work a pretty strenuous schedule for a, a period of time so um you know but i you know I think I'm gonna I'm gonna advocate internally, and I, I do I do believe and hope that folks will will be supportive of us. So I'm sorry if that was a, I'm sorry if that was a milk toast answer. I don't no, know no, that I could give a better one. No, it's all good. I think you need an assistant director. <laughs> that or a cloning machine. Well, definitely an assistant director. Yeah, it, assistant can, director yeah. for press. You can't do it all. Yeah, you can't. No, do it all. you can't. And you, you're going to get burnt out if you don't have time off. And, and exactly. Like it just won't work. Yeah. Uh, one, one quick little thing, too, in terms of like when you were talking about like the little flyers and stuff like that. One thing that I know like Cooley does and some of the other kind of like clinics do, they send those little like uh, magnets because I know I have them like right on the on my fridge and stuff like that with their numbers. So that's just a quick way to kind of just boom have it right there because i know i look at, at yes this. Uh, we are we are all like we, at community safety day i know that that was a challenge what i saw was a lot of kids including my own walking around in fire hats so we're looking at a lot of things that you know i i, I you know shirts things that that folks can have um one of the i'm really excited kat newman is uh an absolute visionary we are lucky to have her um so for homeless folks, in lieu of giving out business cards with our number on it, uh, we're going to get our number printed on socks. The idea being, if you need us, we're there. And if you don't, you got a warm pair of socks and it serves two purposes. And so that's the approach we're taking to engagement is as much as possible not to have it be like a disposable, you know, another thing going into the trash, but something that even if the number doesn't serve you, it's a piece of clothes, it's it's a snack, it's something that serves a basic need for you as well. So uh, I'm, I, I cannot take any credit for that. Uh, Kat Newman, who led the ambassador program in town, um, he was the first hire after me, uh, was an absolute steal and, uh, and thinks of things like that all the time. It's a great idea. Very good idea. <laughs> Creative and practical. I can That's also right. see uh, scarves for the winter. <laughs> So we, we hadn't thought about that yet, but I promise you there'll be some scars <laughs> with our number on them. Okay, great. Uh, any other comments or, or questions for Earl? 
Well, can I can well, I give you guys you for... an example one real quick? Oh yeah, give yes, us give yes. us one. So, definitely. I'm I'm proud. I I uh, I I'm, I always think about uh, Alicia Walker saying in that town council meeting where they approved me that this was like holding someone's baby. So this feels like I get to brag about uh, our shared baby a little bit. Um, so the one of the calls that, the call I'm most proud of uh, was to Atkins. Um, there was a an elderly woman who had shown up there at 4 a.m. who had recently become homeless, um, and knew that the folks at Atkins were good folks. They, they let this person in. Um, the issue was that wasn't going to be a long-term uh, answer for the, the question. Um, the PD was dispatched, and she just wasn't in a space where that engagement was going to bear fruit. Um, and so Mike Curtin and Chief Livingstone decided to give it a try, see if this was a crest call. Um, I was able to deploy out with uh, our all-female team, Vanessa and Brittany, who are, are wonderfully talented. I just want to know, a note that there's a real need for that in town, for kind of folks to be able to support it by women without uh, a man kind of in the, in the lead role. Um, the work they did to earn this person's trust, they sat for 20 minutes, and not once did they talk about her, this person leaving Atkins. They talked about life. Um, they talked about life experiences, growing up, where they'd grown up, who had raised them. And in 20 minutes, uh, this person who, when we sat down, said, I don't trust you, I'm not going to trust you. Um, we were able to take, and with the support of Tim at Craig's door, um, we were able to get this person from Atkins to a shelter, uh, a room of their own in 45 minutes, um, which is something I'm incredibly proud of. And that there was no force used. Uh, this person was happy to go with us. Um, we had a wonderful conversation. And we've provided follow-up support to that person for the last two weeks and are actually building a really meaningful relationship uh, that we, we, we hope uh, will, will be a gateway to this person finding permanent housing. But it's an example of a situation that um, wouldn't have been appropriately handled by existing public safety structures um, that, that actually felt there was not a moment there where we felt uncomfortable with it. Um, we were able to relate to this person. They, they came from a religious context, so we were able to have uh, that conversation with them. And, and at the end of it, uh, one of the things, one of the mottos you'll hear if you come in our offices is, is we're here to do the art. Um, we're not here to, to make anybody do anything, to force someone, but instead to provide them the reasons why they might want to do something that, that might benefit them. Um, and, and my folks did the art that day. Um, I would stand that up with, with any support that anybody in town could get. That person was not coerced or forced. Um, and, and because we had an existing relationship with Craig's door, um, a room was able to be made available that might not have been available otherwise. So uh, I think it highlights the work our folks do, the collaboration we do, and frankly, uh, Chief Livingstone and, and Mike Kerr and looking at uh, us as a viable option for, for calls that come into town. Um, and, and we're really, really glad to know all those folks involved. Wait, uh, Earl, just a quick question for that. But, yeah. but first, obviously, yay, that sounds awesome. I'm so happy because that's a lot of what we envisioned, right? Uh, but one quick question. So with that person, right, you know, let's say, and I don't know if this person had like, you know, mental health issues and things like that too. Um, do they get connected to like therapists or whatever? Because, you know, obviously if there's someone that is housing insecure or homeless or, you know, houseless, they won't have they won't have the money to pay you know for anyone so is are those types of connections being made but but more so for longer term not just for like a week or two type yeah. of thing so yeah we were this this was a particular situation i'm another holyoke person someone who had roots back in holyoke so we were actually able to connect them with providers in holyoke uh who felt culturally relevant to them uh we've taken this person grocery shopping we're connecting them really the idea for us is we believe a warm handoff is when a person feels like they're resolved with us so we are looking to provide this person with resources that are long-term meaningful and that makes sense in the context of their life um and that may mean this may be a person that we work with for the next two years um it may look more permanent for them um you know, if you see our uniforms, they're gray, kind of that's what we think of. We own the the grayness of it. And um, but yeah, all of the supports we're looking to are with the other folks, the social service meeting we had um, had some some capacity from folks who have clinic hours. It's challenging to get folks an appointment. Um, and we're really excited for the community based uh, behavioral health clinics that will be opening up in January. We think that they will be a real resource, but um, we, our partners at the Department of Mental Health uh, at CSO have been real godsends in those situations and providing folks even an immediate appointment um, to just 
just be able to get a medication issue resolved um, has been really important. So, um, so this is almost like the vehicles, the backup isn't on our end for that, um, which is why we, we're gonna likely hold some of these cases a little bit longer than we would ideally because of the backup in the mental health system right now. So all, um, I'm very excited about all you've shared tonight and maybe at some point I'd like to connect with you and you know, um, work with you about other resources that Chris might not be aware of. Sure. There was an incident that you, your program handled that from my professional life came to me as well. So there might be some resources that I feel that our resident might benefit from in the future, but we can talk that offline. Yeah, the, the only thing I know is that I don't know what I don't know. So mm -hmm. anytime something like that comes up where folks think we might miss a resource, please call us. I just want to highlight quickly one other short call, which is we actually did a follow-up call at the Survival Center for someone who had experienced some racial animus from someone there. Uh, we weren't there to resolve the issue, but really for the person to feel heard. Right to have a a, a person I, of color show up yes, and really bear bear witness mm -hmm. to uh, Pamela. You might want to mute D. Oh, there we oh there we go. Oh, sorry. Um, so really, just to hold space for this person. That's not something I kind of had envisioned, but I got to be the person to go out and do that. And I found it to be such a rich experience that it's something we're adding as we're talking to provide to to agencies and business in town that there is actually a real potential follow up and mediation that doesn't involve the aggressor, that involves the space and the person who's staying there and how do we kind of not just mend those fences, but talk about how we might handle those things differently. And then additionally, so that person doesn't have to bear the weight of, of reaching out to other public safety infrastructures in town, uh, kind of taking some information and then passing that off to limit that exposure for a person. I, the Survival Center has been a really good partner. I'm not just saying that because you're here, Philip, but we have found that the, the folks we work with, there's a big overlap and, you know, just being able to bring them there and get them a meal um, is huge. But that that support post um, racial aggression is something that we find, uh, I found actually to be really um, just a nice experience to meet someone, but also to kind of bear witness to their pain. And that's a very specific type of pain. Uh, today, we had the first incident where a responder was called the slur by someone they re responded to. Um, and and we, we are working with Pamela and everyone in town to provide kind of meaningful supports when those things come up. But unfortunately, they do. And so we, I just want Folks, you know, I know that CSWG report speaks to a lot. That anti-racism piece is something that we think about at the end, the beginning and end of every meeting we have as we do every initiative. Who are we missing? And, and then also the other side of that, how do we not overserve communities uh, of color? Because that is uh, an issue for folks. So one of the things I just want to say to you that uh, uh, we've said to the school board is we are currently writing a policy about non-surveillance. Uh, we will not participate in any surveillance, uh, any predictive policing. Um, that is not our work and it will not become our work. So I just want to, that's the sort of policy work we're, we're being explicit about right now. That's good to know, Earl. Um, so you're saying that's being written, and sorry, I, it's yeah. like going no, on no. in my house, but no. um, so um, that's being written into the MOU with the school. No, that's being written into no. our policies. Oh, and your policy, so period. Our policies, okay, yeah. So great. even in those MOUs, our folk, we're working on probably a dozen MOUs with okay. other municipalities and the, the colleges but all of them will, will be held to that policy. We do not do surveillance or predictive policing. Uh, it is not something that, that fits well with us, is in our intention or our mission. Great, I'm glad you're being mindful and thoughtful um, around that. So thank you again um, for your very uh, detailed report. Let it me is... know if you want less next time. We can, no, we can no, go no, for we two hours. We okay. love it. So we I, love... I just want to thank Chalo, um, one of our responders who wrote that report, who got that to me. I'm very proud of him, someone who, who has really made the data his own and, um, and, and deserves praise. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, we definitely want this continued conversation with you. We, we will generate that report on a monthly basis for you moving forward. Great, great. I think all the data is important, but the the anecdotal stories and interactions with the community are... I'd love to bring a responder here to, to talk about what the work has felt like yeah, for them at some point, that would too. Be great. great, maybe next yeah. report. Maybe that next report. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also, you know, remember, we're here as a resource, too. So if you all do run into any roadblocks, any issues, yeah. anything that comes up that you all need support, 
make sure, you know, you don't have to wait a month down the road, you know, hiring, hiring, hiring. If you know a great person and you're waiting, tell them to come on now. I think we pay a decent salary. It's a union job. And I'm, I'm committed to one of these folks getting a pension at the end of it. Well, so. um, email us the, um, if, if that could be shared, like the responder yes. position, um, that would be good. Cause then I can share it with my networks, especially around Cape Verdean, Portuguese speaking folks that you said you want. I mean, I could share it with my network. So we will, we will get me, that to you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, so let us continue in our our agenda here. Uh, this is good. I feel good. I know it's it's really great to yes. hear how well this is going, and not to say there aren't you know challenges, yeah. but they they seem to be working through them. Yeah. Um. So, a number five on our agenda is the town council meeting preparation, and. Were we Oops, sorry. sorry. Were we going to get a DEI report? Oh, that's well? right. Oh, well, oh, yes. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean <laughs> to skip you, Pam. It just, it's like within that same line. So right. forgive that's me. That's okay. I, I actually have been treading water for the last few weeks, so I don't have a lot to report on anyway. So that's, it's fine um, um, that I'll just take a, a short amount of time. So uh, I've been supporting the HRC. We had a retreat a couple of weeks ago, looking at their bylaws. I think that that went really well and we're gonna propose some changes there. Um, I've done some community engagement with Hampshire College, with UMass and with Amherst College, um, meeting folks there. So today met with the equivalent of the uh, chief diversity officer for um, Hampshire College, uh, the neighborhood resource um, groups that Earl mentioned that his responders did. I also did two of the those three events and then connected with another colleague at, um, at Hampshire College who um, actually has, uh, uh, is looking for some placements for some students that she volunteers, well, to some volunteer placements for some students. So. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Mellon May's um, undergraduate fellowship. It's a, it is a program that's funded by the Mellon Foundation that supports undergraduate students um, who are interested in the academy. And uh, it's a small court, cohort, generally um, highly motivated uh, academic students and um, Rosemary, my colleague, works with this group and is looking for some, some volunteer placements or internships or other opportunities for them to work um, with the city and town and different groups. So, um, so that was the purpose of our uh, meeting. I've been uh, chairing the HR director search, which is coming to a close. We've uh, recommended three individuals that will be meeting uh, well, Paul's already met with one. We'll meet with the other, the remaining two um, on Friday of this week. Um, working a little bit with Earl on his search for the crest responder. Um, and, um, oh, I did want to, to say that there has been some follow-up with Brianna on the language access piece. So I know that um, a contract has been, I think, completed for at least online translation of some of the materials that are on the website, but there are still some gaps in the language um, access. And so um, a couple of things have been brought to my attention even today by the assistant town manager. So we're, we're continuing to work on that piece, um, but there has been some progress. So. I'll try to perhaps for the next meeting uh, have more complete information about what, what services are in existence, um, but I know that there has been some movement there. And um, other than that, I don't know if I have a lot to report on. So. Well, thank you. Uh, sounds like you've been busy. Mm -hmm. um, I had a question, I guess, um, for you to clarify about the language translation. It sounds like if it's going to be online, that it's textual. 
um, for town council meetings, is there any translation uh, within Zoom? So, so there is translation available in Zoom for town council um, uh, meetings. There is, and I, so I'm, as you know from this meeting, like technology is not my strength, but I do know that um, from conversations with Brianna that there is an ability through the Zoom platform to have, um, uh, I believe, translation services um, available. Uh, so that would address town town um, uh, town council meetings. There, one of the gaps that came um, apparent today was that um, I believe it's the planning committee is going to be meeting with the developer, and there were um, community members who wanted to respond to the proposed development. And um, we're looking to be able to be a part of that planning committee meeting and um, uh, have translation from their native language to the committee in English. And so there has been sort of a, a temporary workaround where a, a city employee is going to attend that meeting, but that's definitely an ongoing um, gap that we need to address. So not there. You know, it, we're we're certainly not there. I think there are some steps made, but there are um, multiple areas as far as translations of forms that came up recently, um, translation for board and committee meetings. Um, uh, if the person is wants to be at you know to attend in person, so there's a number of different areas where there's still gaps, but there I do know that we have made some steps to make sure that some information would be um, would be able to that, that individuals would be able to translate and I, and I do believe if I may be incorrect but the current website allows for translation into some languages right it, it does so thank you for that um, I, you know, I just want to emphasize if if we are to have equity or at least some level of uh, equitable access, we must. This this has to be this year. We have to have translation of town council meetings at the very least for our residents uh, to be able to understand and participate. Um, and engage with what's going on. So I know you're working on it. Sounds like Brianna's working on it with you. I know she's the, the technology guru, but um, it's, it's something that I, I just, I'm very passionate about. Um, I know it hinders a lot of participation on so many levels for uh, people where English is not their first language. So, um, Great, I, I'll look forward to hearing more about it as, as this progresses. Um, looks like we have questions. I don't know who raised their hand first, Deborah or Miss Pat. So whichever I think you- think it's Deborah. Okay, well, there you go, Deborah. Hey, hey, uh, Pamela, thank you for the, the report. Um, I do have a question though, in terms of, um, did you get any more clarity as to why the police asked you or the town or whomever asked you to write that report? Um, around, you know, what happened to, to the Amherst Nine? Um, because like you said, I mean, you've since, after we had those conversations, you've since said that, you know, you don't have any real investigatory power in, in regards to them. So again, I'm so confused as to why you wrote that report. And then yeah. two, when is the report from the police coming out? Did you make any inquiries in regards to that? Because I know we had discussed it and right. I believe you were going to like inquire as to when the police were going to have the um, report on that. I mean, obviously, I don't know what the holdup is. So right. any yeah. information? So, so I believe that the police, um, that both Chief Livingston and I have been um, asked to, um, to complete, I don't know if we're going to be in person, but to provide updated information to the town council at their next meeting or for their next meeting on October 17th. Um, I was asked, and perhaps I misspoke at the last meeting, but my the request for me to write that report did not come from the police department, but basically came from an inquiry from the town manager to take a look at the situation. So I, I can't remember uh, 
what was said at the last meeting if I indicated that I was no asked no it was right because I I guess I, I I don't think I I said that I was asked by the police department to write a report but no 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 I, I didn't yeah. know I was just like that's why I said I don't yeah. know if it was the police okay. or if it was the town manager remember that's how I said it I, I don't okay. remember you know what All I'm right. saying so okay you clarified it was the town manager what I'm asking you was because yeah why did the town manager ask the DEI uh, a director or whatever to 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 write that report um, when you really don't have any oversight over the police, you don't have any investigatory, as you later said to us, right, right, when, right, when we asked you questions, I don't know why you were the one that that was designated as the person to investigate that situation. So, you know I, was, so I, I don't think that was, I mean, my report was not presented as an investigation of the situation, because as we all know, I don't have investigatory uh, power over the no I did, we didn't know that because you know the thing is is the newspa newspapers kind of put it out there like you know you exonerated the police I mean that was exact a newspaper title mm -hmm. the DEI director of the town exonerates Amherst police from any wrongdoing in the in the in the July you know fifth incident you see what I'm saying? And and that's why, you know, I'm just kind of like, that's why I'm asking these questions. So I, I think it's it just I think seems it's like you're used obvious... again, as I said, like a shield. Mm -hmm. And those questions need need to be asked. You know what okay. I'm saying? Because basically we had the, the that meeting months ago. You presented at that. We haven't gotten any other information from the police since then. And and the only thing that's out there is your your um you know again like you said it wasn't investigatory but your report right. that really had a lot of gaps a lot of holes and no updated information in regards to it and this is really frustrating you know and i'm sorry that you're the one that's feeling it but you were the one that took on that mission well so now, that's right i have pretty tough skin so i i don't mind the tough questions um i th i think and and this is sort of an uh, an awkward position so i don't want to speak for the town manager i will say this I, it is my understanding that I was asked to review the situation because the role of DEI is one that's supposed to encompass all of the departments in town, any issues that would be framed as a diversity, equity, and inclusion issue, and the way in which the, uh, that police interaction sort of bubbled up to the surface was one in which there was an allegation of racism or discrimination or harassment, um, you know, the broad. And so I believe that that is why I was asked to take on that role. In addition to doing the work as the DEI director, I, we, I also worked with the HRC to suggest that that was another avenue where they could file a complaint um, and seek additional information. So I don't, I, I mean, it sounds as if you're suggesting that this was outside of my purview and I should not have had a, uh, any role um, and which well, if, if I, I just think that you shouldn't have had a role that was so finite right where you went and, I don't, and, and I don't, you and you um, basically said that it was something what was the exact words because obviously I haven't read that report in a while but it was something that you know it wasn't a violation or, or whatever whatever word you used um, which I think was very finite which really like I said led to all of these different, um, you know, newspaper articles basically saying that the Amherst Police Department was exonerated. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. so that's the only thing that I want. I want you, you know, because you're, you know, you're new to the, you're new to the position, you're new to the mm -hmm. area in terms of of the situation, like Amherst, Amherst politics, Amherst bureaucracy, and Amherst issues, right? And so you just want to be careful in regards to it, right? Because as you stated, I could see if you did that because you had some type of investigatory arm mm -hmm. with the police or you had some type of investigatory arm with anything else. You see what I'm saying? Um, but, but barring the fact that you don't, I don't think it was, you know, maybe you could have laid out the facts uh, as, you, as you knew them at the time, but not then made some type of conclusory, um, you, know, uh, 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 you know, remark in regards to what you found out. I think that's where then you run into problems, right? Well, um, thank you but very much given for given your, the fact that you didn't your, have any of it, yeah. given the fact that you don't have any any power really, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do anything in regards to it. So so I think that that's that's my issue with this. And then second, when is that report going to come out from the police? 
So, so you said you struggle with breathing <laughs> right. So, so I, I just answered that question, right? And I am, as you just stated, don't have any authority over the police department. But it is my understanding that uh, the town council will invite will invite the police, or had intention to invite the uh, police chief and myself back to the next uh, town council meeting. But based on your comment, perhaps there's not enough need for me to um, to be there. Well, I think you 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 just got to be careful what you say. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You can be there, but just yeah. be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and and well, that, for me though, okay, that him being invited to the next town, town council meeting doesn't say anything to me. I I'm asking when is the report coming out? So are you well, telling yeah. me that at the next town council meeting, the report no. they're going to have the report for us? So I I cannot answer for Chief Livingston. I so I mean the best answer that I can provide you is the one that I gave with you, which is that it is my understanding that both Chief Livingstone and myself were going to be invited back to the next town council meeting. But I can't tell you what the chief or any of his officers are going to do. Okay, well, you know, I'm putting it out there again that I wanna know, right? And maybe if you can do that because you're in the mix there, when the report is going to come out, that's what I wanna know. And I'll okay. just say me, you know what I'm saying? I won't even say the group, I'll say me. I want to know when that report is going to come out. I don't want to hear, you know, any more like this and that and dancing around the issue. I want to know when that report is coming out. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Deborah. One, one, of, the thing, uh, one of the things that, and, and I miss Pat's next, but I think is important if we, listen and watch the August meeting, Chief Livingstone himself says that he's going to um, uh, conduct an uh, investigation and send out a report. So that was August and we're still waiting. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand that uh, you, Pam, and then Chief Livingstone will be invited but does that really constitute, and it, it's not about you being invited, I think it's, we all need to be there and be in conversation, mm -hmm. but does Chief Livingstone appearing at the town council, does that constitute a report? So you're asking a question that I, I don't have the ability to And, and really, answer. I'm asking right, because it, it because it, I mean, the, per, the only person who could answer for yes. Chief Livingstone is Chief Livingstone. Exactly. And so I I'm can't, at, right. right. So I, I can't answer for him. Right. I, I, I can't dictate or give sure. a date or sp specify what he or his officers intend to yeah. do or what they're what date they're going to, you know, provide a report. Right. I can only provide you with the information that I have, which I have done. And and I appreciate that. I, I think it's more important that we as a CSSJC ask that, excuse me, openly mm -hmm. uh, for, for not only to, to satisfy our mission, but for the community. Mm -hmm. Where is the report, Chief Livingstone, that you said uh, you were going to do in August. So there, there's that. And I'll go on to Miss Pat. So Miss Pamela, thank you for the report. Um, I'm glad that you're, you know, trying to engage with different um, stakeholders in our town and the area colleges. Thank you for your report. Um, I know you're super busy. It's a uh, DEI department is one of the most important departments in our town. All departments are also important. So I appreciate the work that you do. So I have two quick questions. And that is, in our last CSSJ meeting, I had mentioned um, in terms of the uh, MS-9 and their family statements, it was also delivered to, H, uh, to the human Right Commission, do you know during the retreat, perhaps maybe Philip can um, tell us um, what was the document you know discussed um, with the bylaw that HRC is proposing, would that give them more power to take more action in future discrimination complaints so in our town? 
So the, the uh, uh, incident and the letter was discussed at the, um, at the retreat. I don't believe that the redder, letters were, were read in their entirety, but they were read at the last HRC meeting. And so that was part of the discussion. Um, the bylaws that we discussed looked at some procedural issues. So, and would seek to clarify some of the powers that the HRC, the Human Rights Commission would have. So one of the things that we discussed would be, um, we discussed whether, uh, what was the time frame from a complaint coming in and um, a response coming out to the HRC. We discussed um, whether um, the, respondent in a complaint would be notified immediately upon a complaint being um, filed. We um, talked about uh, looking at the language, the sort of the, I what I'm gonna broadly classify as the equity language in town, like um, talking about the affirmative action plan, the EEO policy, the DEI statement to see if there were a uniform. And, that, and we also said, uh, very clearly that this was just the beginning of the conversation. Like we, the, the Human Rights Commission knows that they will need to spend more time discussing um, the changes that are made. Uh, and I had provided the Human Rights Commission prior to the retreat, a document that looked at the way in which other human rights commissions operate around the state. So for example, I believe it might be the city of Lynn or maybe the city of Beverly where the Human Rights Commission only meets four times a, a year and they only provide like informational, uh, you know, to the town residents. And we can contrast that with like the city of Cambridge where their Human Rights Commission is staffed with attorneys and they actually have, you know, um, the full authority to litigate um, cases and, uh, you know, um, and sort of said, you know, where, where's the capacity for the town of Amherst? And I suggested that we look very closely at the town of Arlington. The Arlington DEI director is a colleague and um, I looked um, at some of their bylaws to see if they would, if they would be helpful for uh, providing a model for how we might operate or how the Human Rights Commission might operate. In addition to that, um, also pointed out for the town of Arlington that there's some things that I, that you know, we wouldn't want to adopt. We might adopt part or not, or not part. So I, I mean, I can, I'll stop there and let Philip, uh, perhaps provide more information since he was at the retreat. If I may finish up my question and I will shut up. Is that okay? Oh, sure. Please? Okay. Please. So, so. Um, Something that has really bothered me, and I think, you know, I think that HR um, Human Rights Commission uh, commissioners should be paid stipend, like CS, like us. They should be paid stipend for their time. I wonder if that was even discussed at the retreat. It was not discussed at the retreat. Yeah. Okay. I. I you know, if we're talking about equity, you know, most of the folks on that committee are people of color, and we don't have too many of us in this town. The fact that, in fact, I think anyone serving on committee should be paid stipend because the school committee school committee members get paid, paid, town councilors get paid, we get some stipend. I think it should be across the board. If anybody decides that they don't want it, they can donate the money. But um, I think it's something that. If you want to recruit more diverse people in with HRC, is something that you know the town manager should consider to to give stipend to them. Uh, that's all I have to say. Right. Oh, one last thing, and it's not part of your report. It's actually good thing, depending on who you know. Um, I read in town manager's report that our town is collaborating with my ancestral country, Nigeria, uh, government. I don't know if you're part of that, but it seems like Brianna, the communication director seems involved. I read that 
I wanted to know if you're involved as the DEI director and has there been any outreach done to Nigerian community in Amherst who could so, you know, support the project? I'm excited. That's what yeah, I, so yeah. I don't know um, about Rihanna's, um, the project that was reported in the, in the town manager's report. So I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not certain. Was it, um, was it collaboration with, with the Nigerian government that was in the yeah. report? Or was yeah, it's, it, um, it's a Mandela Foundation, something okay, like that. Yeah. yeah, something like so the, that. Right. That so they the, started this summer mm -hmm. and I'm just floored. Yeah, so that was a, a good what, thing to have a long-term relationship. Right. To do this so that each country, uh, each community, it's a, it's a Abuja, uh, the, the capital, mm -hmm. uh, some town um, elected officials and em employees are doing this, but I think it would have been a simple courtesy to reach out to Nigerian community in Amherst to let mm -hmm. us know, uh, instead of me just reading it and people were calling me, texting me, do you know mm -hmm. about this? I'm like, I have no idea. You're reading it as I... I read it too. Okay. It's just so our me, communication in this town is just weird. That's all so I can I, say. It's a good thing. It's a good mm -hmm. thing. So I don't know how it was written in the report, but I uh, let me provide some clarification on, on the Mandela Fellowship. So UMass Amherst um, is one of, I think, about 30 colleges and universities around the country that um, host a Mandela Fellows, and they come, um, they're actually, it's a program from the State Department, and it has two components. It has one component, um, which uh, attracts uh, young African leaders, so the subname is Yali, so it's a Young African Leaders Institute. Uh, the, uh, uh, President Obama started this process, and um, individuals apply in their home countries, are selected, and then placed at universities around the country. Um, and um, I, uh, so both the town manager, Brianna, and I attended a UMass event, which was a reception for Yali Fellows. So I don't, I don't know what is written in the report, but that is the connection to the Mandela Fellows, that it was attendance at, at this UMass event. Um, and then um, we each had an opportunity. There's, I, I'm going to guess that there were maybe 30 different fellows from um, from all across the um, the con continent of Africa um, to to meet with them. Um, we are they attempt to to pair individuals with individuals who have similar interests. So I received um, a list and was introduced to three um, young women who are interested in the law or who have law degrees in their home countries. Um, so that's the program. Beyond that, I don't know of the existence of a program where the town is working directly with Ni the Nigerian government. And the YALI program came at, we the town manager, myself and other people in town received an invitation to go to the UMass event. So again, I'm not familiar with exactly what's written in the town manager's report, but um, I know that we did a, attend a YALI event and that if there's something in addition to that, I'm, I don't, I'm not aware of it. Thank you for sharing. I'm just, you know, I guess what I'm trying to get at is it's a good thing. And I thank our town government, town council, town manager for wanting to collaborate with, you know, my home country, but it's just like not reaching out to my community. It's mm -hmm. So what strange. I'm trying to That's point it. out is that it, it was a UMass event. So we would not have had the opportunity to invite people to an event. We were, we received invitations to go to. It's not what I'm saying, just like email to us. I said, oh, by the way, you know, we're thinking about collaborating with Nigeria. You're from Nigeria, you know, we are experts as Nigerians who live here. We will be of value and support to our town officials. Is what I'm trying to say. But I don't want to label the issue. I know we have um, other agendas. But thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. So just quickly, thank you, uh, Pam, for sharing what what again sounds like a a, a very 
uh, busy schedule, and I know that it's been impacted by shortage in staff, um, but um, thank you. Uh, just reminds me, Ms. Pat, you know, what you're speaking to 15 years ago when I arrived here, there was more of a town gown effort in collaboration um, in, in some very formal and organized ways. And I agree that it's, again, it's, it was a, a UMass event, but when folks from different countries come, you know, here, one way to make sure that they find home and want to stay or want to come back is to connect to connect people with communities. So, um, you know, just to, to think about that in terms of expanding this notion of uh, diversity and equity. Mm -hmm. So are there any yeah. other questions for uh, Pam Young and DEI? I'm sorry, Pam, you were gonna- I was gonna say, I will um, make sure that I share your comments with UMass with the organizers of the event, because I think the invitation has to come from them. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe, maybe we're referring with two different projects, actually. This one says, this is a more like exchange program between our town and a particular area in my country. Maybe, yeah. you know, oh, you so think it's the same I, one? I don't know, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not certain. So okay. it could be two different programs. Yeah, it might be, yeah, but anyway. Okay. Uh, Philip, did you want to fill us in uh, more on the, the bylaw discussion and Human Rights Commission connected with DEI? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, I think that to um, a little bit of Ms. Pat's point is that with the looking at the bylaws of the different uh, municipalities being Cambridge and the various kind of like they have almost like a court type of proceeding happening over there at the Human Rights Commission that we want to take a kind of mutual or like a center approach to it from Cambridge and from the other one, I forget right now, the other, the other one that meets um, only four mm -hmm. times a year and to having that capacity be basically that we can still receive complaints Hopefully, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pamela, um, the DEI department would be looking at it with the chairs of the Human Rights Commission, and then we can go from there to see what kind of steps can be taken. And so that's kind of the bylaw that we've written up. But right now, I think that the point that I was going to make is that um, pointing out Miss Pat's kind of stipend conversation around it is that we have limited um, commissioners is really an issue that we're facing at the Human Rights Commission. We don't, sometimes it's difficult to meet a quorum. So I think that if we had a more active Human Rights Commission, um, that that might be something that we can look into to further the bylaw. And it is gonna be an ongoing conversation and um, to look to see how we're gonna move forward. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions for uh, Pam Young and DEI, um, I'd like to move on to the next item. So town council meeting preparation, and um, I believe uh, President uh, Council President Lynn Greismer, um, Greismer is in the audience. Can, we take five minutes can, I ask, can I ask one question though? So uh, um, are we, is there going to, are we going to be able to present at the town council meeting or? Well, why, so two things. So Ms. Pat has asked for uh, a short break. Um, if we can do that, if everyone agrees. Um, and then when we come back, uh, I'm sure Lynn Griesma will be able to answer that question. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's take a five minute break. Thank you.
Still waiting on Deborah Ricky. I'm here. Oh, hey. <laughs> right, I just Frickie. didn't have the video on. Yeah, let's see. Freke, are you here? All right, everyone's in the house. Okay, so um the next thing on the agenda is uh, town council meeting preparation. And Lynn has joined us as a panelist. Hello, Lynn. Sorry, I needed to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also show my face, which seems to be a little brighter than I want it to be. Uh, but anyway, uh, first of all, thank you for um, including me on your agenda. And I have to say, I really enjoyed listening to the last hour and a half of your meeting. It was very informative and uh, enjoyed the questions that you've asked. Uh, there are a couple other counselors in the room, some of whom have asked if they could join me in this discussion. We can't bring them all in because that would constitute a quorum. Uh, in fact, let me just mention Anna Devlin Gothier's in the room, in the audience, Andy Steinberg, Anika Lopes, uh, Dorothy Pam, Alicia Walker, and Michelle Miller, and Pat DeAngelis. Two of those people are the ongoing um, liaisons to the committee. But if you could bring in um, Anika Lopes and Michelle Miller, that would be useful. And um, I just want to explain that uh, Alicia is also in the audience. And Alicia, um, if we already have two people from finance committee, so we're on the teetering edge of that. But uh, since we have eight people on finance, if Alicia did want to join, uh, you should raise your hand. Yeah, bring Alicia in, please. Okay. And at some other point in time, other counselors may, who are in the audience may wanna raise their hands. But um, first of all, uh, you did request that you are on the be on the agenda for this coming meeting. And at this point, that is the plan. Uh, in addition to that, I do wanna clarify um, that uh, because I was listening to your earlier conversation, I have asked the town manager to make sure that in our packet for this coming Monday night is a report, a written report from the police chief and a written uh, update from uh, Pamela Young. Okay, so-, so uh, Lynn, Lynn, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm just having uh, difficulty uh, getting Alicia into the room. So let me, I'm just gonna try oh, one more time. I don't you, know, Alicia, if you- uh, Now she looks like she's doing it. There you go. Thank you. Hi, Alicia. So that it, it is on our agenda that they will be, um, they, they will, the reports will be in the packet and they will be there. And if needed, we will ask for a presentation, but certainly have a question and answer period or comment period. Uh, and that came directly out of both your request, but also the last meeting of the council, where counselors, again, were very clear that they would like to see the final, uh, the updated report from um, the DEI director and uh, the report from the police. Um, so uh, that's that piece. Um, the other piece that you also mentioned, and then I'm, uh, Deborah, I'll get to questions, okay, uh, was talking about the uh, seven points that you made in your letter. And as I'm sure you are aware, I drafted a response and I have to say, I've never spent so much time on a response to a letter, uh, but that's my problem, not yours. Uh, and I shared that with the council, but they never discussed it. They really focused in on the completion of the reports 
and getting those reports and um, wanting to look at what have we learned and then also a potential retreat. So many of you I know were in the audience, uh, several of you were in the audience. Uh, thank you for hanging in with us so late. Um, I hope your meetings don't go as late for your sake, but our meetings do because of everything on our agenda. So why don't I pause there and say, I do hope we can focus on what it is you would like to get out of the meeting on Monday. We are going to have to restrict it to an hour. We actually begin our meeting at 5.30 on Monday night. And then we have a, that we have three different meetings Monday night and we have a ton on our plate. So as you well know. So Deborah, I, you, would you like, I'm sorry, D, how would you like to proceed? Yes, so Deborah had her hand up first, and uh, we'll go ahead and take questions if you're finished um, yes. providing right, so, us with info. Yeah, so I guess like the first question would be around the timing. So you said that the meeting on Monday night is only for an hour, you said? No, no, no. The first <laughs> hour is from 5.30 to 6.30. Oh, that is okay. a working session of the council on the rental bylaw. The second meeting is a public forum on the financial orders that were on the council's agenda this last time, and that those uh, financial orders have been reviewed by the finance committee. They've been unanimously recommended to the council, but we have to hold a public forum because those are financial orders. The third meeting is our general town council meeting, and it's during that meeting that we are setting aside an hour for the conversation that includes um, the CSSJC. Does that help? So, so yeah, well, one is that I have another community meeting on that same day and I had that meeting on even before this one because again, I didn't hear anything back and I can't be holding up my meetings because of not knowing whether you all were gonna put us on or not. So I have another meeting that starts at six o'clock. So for me, uh, obviously I wanna attend this meeting too, um, so what time approximately would CSSJC be on? And, and by that, I mean that hopefully this time we will not be shut out while whomever is presenting on the issue. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll be part of the conversation. When, so I do when not want to be out in the audience for like two hours, three hours while everything's being discussed and then we'd be brought in. So when I think that's you, the first question. The first question is when will CSSJC be on? Because like I said, I have another community meeting starting at six o'clock. So when will, will will that be on? When will you be done with your other meeting? It's um, six to 7.30, 7.30, 6 to 7.30. Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking that is I'm finalizing the agenda tomorrow before it's posted and we can change the time. Right now I have it posted for seven to eight. Uh, and I uh, will just move the time accordingly. Uh, it might actually, uh, let me just look at how to move it to seven, to no earlier than 7.30 and get back to you all as fast as I can. Okay. Because that would be great in terms of our timing. Absolutely. And then the other one, the other question that I have is more so the one that I had posed to uh, Pamela earlier. So uh, I know that you all are asking for uh, Pamela to ask for an update from her report. Um, since that August meeting or, or whatever, yeah, the meeting we had with you all in the town council, um, you know, since I've learned and we've learned that, you know, Pamela doesn't have any investigatory capability. She doesn't oversee the police, um, you know, any of that. So what is the point of her doing the report? Uh, or giving you all an update on it. You, you see what I'm saying? So why isn't it just the police is, you know, the one that has the, the investigation? Uh, unless, I mean, unless Pamela's the, uh, gonna be sharing resources for the family or maybe talking about the compensation fund that we want, you know, for the families. I mean, that I would feel it would be apropos. However, for her to give an update in terms of anything else in regards to what the incidents, if she doesn't have an investigatory part to play in this, what is the point? The town manager asked Pamela to do the initial investigation based on the request. But wait and a minute, but, I, but, but Pamela said she doesn't investigate. All right. I'm, confu I'm confused. 
I guess I don't want to get into the semantics of it. They, they asked Pamela to do a report, okay? Pamela did a report, and subsequent to that report, I believe there have been some connections with some of the families. I don't know anything else than that because I frankly have not seen the final report. I haven't even seen drafts of the report. I've seen only the same report you've seen. I am waiting like you are and the rest of the town council to see an update, which was talked about on the 16th, 15th of August. And I'm waiting to see the police report. Okay, so so oh, that's fine. I mean, I, obviously, I'm not. I don't want to, you know, get into semantics either. So my my thing is this: I want to actually be protective of of Pamela. She is a woman of color. She's a black woman. She she just started in her position. She's new to the town. She's starting out. I don't want her to be used as a way to protect the police. That's I, I just want to put it out there. You see what I'm saying? I don't want her to 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 be in a position to be put in a position to write a report that will be protective of the police if she doesn't have all the information, if she hasn't been in touch with, with, with the families, if she doesn't have the information. So that is, that is the part, and I wanna be clear, and I wanna be protective of her, you see what I'm saying? So that she does not get put in a, in a position that she'll be put in a, in a bad situation. So that's why I want to be very clear you know, to the town manager, because he hasn't shown up to any of our meetings, but I want to be clear to him as to why it is that he's asking her to, to do an update or to write a report at all about this incident. Since she doesn't have an investigatory arm, she, she can't investigate, she doesn't oversee the police and, you know, and all of that. So uh, again, unless she is going to be doing things to be in support of the, the, the Amherst Nine, the young people that were, you know, violated on that day in terms of compensation, things like that, I don't know what, what the point is. So I, I just wanna put that out there. I think you have every right to raise that question on Monday night. Thank you, Deb. Um, Ms. Pat? So first of all, I wanna thank all the counselors who have been, um, who joined us tonight and those who are also listening. Um, I thank you for your time. So for me, I just want to, again, state that most of the BIPOC youth and their families of July 5th incident, meaning MS9, they approached me, I am their representative. I, they asked me to speak for them and I have shared both at Human Rights Commission meeting as a guest, as a, you know, a resident and I've shared in our CSSJC meeting, meetings. So they have put out statements that they instructed me to, you know, uh, forward to Human Rights Commission, to CSSJC. I would like, they also told me that they would like me to forward that to the town council. So I'll be emailing that to you, Lane, um, to be part of the packet for town council. And in terms of um, final police report, I'll be curious to see if the MS9 voices are being included in the final report. So here are the things that the youth and the families, BIPOC, have requested and that's what they will want because I don't want us to go on Monday and start wasting our time. So may I so, um, observe, Pat, that yeah. this is the first time I've heard there are statements yep. like this. Uh, I don't believe and that Pamela or the police chief has seen those statements or anyone else. I also wanna make very sure that you understand that the moment they come to me by email, they are public records, even That's if correct. they never get posted in the packet, mm -hmm. they are public records. Yeah. And in fact, I've now started including something about that at the bottom of my email. So there's no question. Yeah. We need to be extremely careful since these are minors, or at least we believe they're minors, yeah. that their names are redacted and that they are not directly associated or in any way exposed publicly. Yeah. I, I yeah. looking to the lawyers in the group, Pamela and others to 
confirm that. Mm -hmm. And then the other question I have is if we, the, we have these reports, but Pamela, who has been putting together the com compilation, has never seen them, then we don't have a final report. Six and so months. there is no sense seeing doing this on Monday if we don't have it. Actually, if I may, um, and I don't want to speak for uh, Pamela, she actually has seen it twice at the two different meetings that I referenced, the Human Rights Commission and also to as, and also as CSJCC. So what I wanted to say in terms of the youth, they are protected class. I'm aware of that. So their names are not signed in there. So it's, you know, they have right uh, to confidentiality. Um, it's already out there. I believe Amest indeed already posted it last week in their newsletter. So it's out there. Um, but I will, you know, I would like it to be, you know, they would like it to be part of uh, um, the thank council packet. And thank you for, you know, for your comments in terms of confidentiality. I'm glad mm -hmm. you raised it because some of the counselors were questioning last in your last meeting that they don't even know the name, they don't know who wrote it, just, you know, did somebody just made up, you know, statements. So I'm glad that, you know, we know that the youth have been protected because of their age. So I know that. Mm -hmm. So they want their voices included in the final report. Uh, they want to be made whole. They, you know, some of, the, some of this case and their families are really struggling because of the trauma they, uh, of police misconduct. They need uh, to be healed. They need therapy. Um, compensation fund is not start is non starting. They have to be compensated. If these families were middle class, upper middle class, they'd be lawyering up. So any action by the town that doesn't include compensation isn't going to move any needle. I'm just stating it like like this. It's going to define our town. It's already defined our town this year about inaction of our town. That's two. Another thing they said to me was that the two police officers actually need to make a genuine public apology for what they did. Also, the town manager, uh, the chief police, the town council, the school committee, and the superintendent of schools either as a joint strong statement condemning the misconduct of the police. That's when the pers you know, personal healing for this youth and their families will begin. Before we start even talking about retreat, before we start talking about visioning in our town, before we start talking about community healing, without this youth being made whole, we cannot move forward. This is their message through me that I'm putting out tonight. Thank you. Uh, Pat, I, I'm just gonna be very clear. None of the counselors are going to respond to the issue tonight. We yeah. cannot do that because that would constitute a debate and we are not having a debate tonight ourselves. I do wanna ask, um, Pamela, you have your hand up. Have you received all of these final reports? So um, the, I received a letter from one of the parents um, that was, uh, did have a signature and a name and uh, two anonymous, um, one anonymous letter from parents and one anonymous letter uh, compilation of statements from the youth that were involved. All of those statements were forwarded on to the police department. So all of that information has been sent to the police department. So and they were read publicly in the meetings for the Human Rights Commission and read aloud publicly in the CSJC um, prior meet, well, maybe two meetings ago, but in the CSJC meeting as well. So I have seen the letters and they have, all of that information has been forwarded to the police department. Pat, are there any other letters besides those three? I'm only aware of two letters. Okay. That's, I just want to make sure that 
whatever we're dealing with is the full set of what we're dealing with. Thank you. Okay, I think it's Allegra. I think you and Deb can go before me. I don't um, really remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, uh, Deb, did you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I just have like a follow-up question to, to Lynn and I don't know, Lynn, if, if you can answer it again because I'm, I'm not sure what the parameters are of, 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 the, of you all being on this meeting, the town councilors. Um, but I guess my question either for today or for, for Monday would be, you know, why has it taken so long for, you know, the, the, there to be any action on behalf of the town, on behalf of the police in regards to the Amherst Nine? This happened on July 5th. Um, and we are now, you know, October 12th, soon to be October 17th. And, um, you know, we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard any action. Even like for us, it took like two inquiries. We had, you know, our chairs had emailed you all before. Then we just kind of contacted you all again in regards to it. Um, you know, so uh, again, which really kind of, you know, makes me think, you know, as a BIPOC person, you know, and 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 speaking again for the voices of BIPOC residents in in our community, that this really is not a priority. So um, I don't know if you can address this now or if you want to address it on Monday. But you know, that's going to be one of the things that I, I'll be bringing up. Thank you for letting us know that. That's again, I'm not going to get into the answering questions or debates tonight. I'm trying to get a sense of what it is that people want to cover on Monday night. So I appreciate that, Lynn, and the counselors who have attended. Um, you know, as we attend you all's meetings to stay abreast of how our group can uh, work to make the community better on all issues, you know, having to do with finance, planning, et cetera, because DEI and equity should be everywhere. Um, I urge you all and invite you all to, uh, when you can, to either be in our meeting uh, in the audience or uh, to watch the recorded ones. And I, I know you're, you have a full plate, but uh, I think it would be helpful. So very quickly, um, the youth were not found to have participated in criminal activity. And my concern in re-watching and reviewing the August meeting where um, uh, Chief Livingstone and um, some of the counselors' questions um, really focused on the issue of the, um, the, the law having to do with, you know, minors not driving, you know, being able to drive uh, themselves home, et cetera. I'd like for the police report to um, fully explain why were these youth held for, for what reason, you know, in terms of policy and law and uh, to also have some plan in terms of how this should, you know, how it won't happen. You know, if, if, this, if this occurs, what are the steps the police are going to take in regards to interactions with youth um, so we can have uh, much better outcomes and hope to God that the outcome is never uh, totally negative and, and harmful. Um, and I'd like for um, the town council and the police department to take up the new guidance from post that has been set forth by the state. And it regards all policing departments in the state and their actual uh, guidance. And again, we went through it last meeting our last CSSJC meeting I presented about post, that there are guidelines in how police departments should interact with youth. And so I would like to see not only a, a report about what occurred, but how do we not have uh, these situations have those same outcomes, right? 
um, that the police, either through training or adherence to post, um, will not have this this occur again. So I'd like to see that. What happens next, basically? And then lastly, at least on my end, is you know, I agree with with Deb, and Deb is an attorney herself. And so she she's very much aware. I listen to when Deb's talking <laughs> because it's attorney to attorney in, in many ways. But the protections of our DEI, you know, uh, staff person that we see that she is already overextended, you know, and not to say she's not handling it, she is, but you know, this, this office has a lot to it. And so we wanna make sure that she's supported, but also that uh, her position is not used as Deb put it uh, so succinctly as a shield for the, the police. And, and you know people can interpret it as as they may but but in in some ways it could be interpreted as such and so then it leads me to the review board and what are the possibilities um of having subpoena power as as many review boards do in different municipalities that would be able to um have access to records that would you know impact a case like this and trying to understand what is going on or something more serious and i understand we are in negotiations with um our, our police department um but um we have post guidelines again that are set up by the state so i would like to know how is the town in their negotiations, including these post guidelines as requirements for certification for our police? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Allegra. Thank you. Um, so I guess I just wanted to kind of respond to the last council meeting and you know our uh, you know presentation for this upcoming meeting and you know I did read the letter and I appreciate that you you spent time you know trying to give us a response and I think I think that I I really appreciated some of the counselors in the last meeting saying that you know it, it seemed like there was this emphasis on putting together a letter without as much of an emphasis on the conversations around what the CSSJC had initially asked from council in our first letter. Um, and, and in a sense, I feel like nothing, that, that not much in terms of our asks have changed since we first came to you in August. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly want to reiterate all of those things still stand and that we've had some further conversations about what things might or could look like in terms of some of our new suggestions. Um, and I hope that any conversation going forward can kind of ground itself because I know that part of what you were trying to do was to explain the role of council, what council can and can't do. Um, and so I was, I was looking back through some of the um, materials and I found something from November uh, 8th of 2021, which is kind of the matrix that I believe you had started based on some of the CSWG working recommendations. And I'm just thinking of, of the first example that we had as an ask, for example, was reducing the size of APD freezing positions for now since there was a posting for a vacancy in APD the day after the video um, surfaced in July. Um, and so one of the things that council was, is and was able to do was to consider reducing the size of the Amherst Police Department as a goal in the budget guidelines. And we do know that budget season is starting again. So for example, that is one concrete thing that could be a response in the letter. You know, we will reconsider this. Um, and, and that is, again, an ask that I, 
I am making, and I believe that the majority of the committee would be making as we have put that in our letter previously. Um, so I, I do think that there are some previous documents. There's, there's one from November of 2021 and then one as well, a status report from February 28th of 2022. So those are perhaps documents that could be worked on collaboratively between town council and CSSJC to further the goals of the CSWG and whatever the else the CSSJC brings forward. Um, I do like uh, visual is nice with the columns. It helps me kind of organize my brain. Um, so I do, you know, I, I don't, I'm not saying yes, we're gonna do a retreat, but I'm saying if we're having conversations, it does for me at least help to have some concrete things to work from. And I think our letter certainly is still an important thing to work from as well as perhaps these two documents that have already been created by town council can help remind town council of what their role could and, and should be, I believe. One of those documents is the matrix that's dated in November of 2021. Am, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And the other document is um, it's a status report. Uh, it it okay. was in the town manager report from February 28th of 2022. It starts on page 14 to page 18 of that town manager report. Thank so you. I don't know if, if he generated that or if that was from the council, but. He, he generates his report and he did that. He included that because we asked him to continually update us on the issues. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Allegra. Those great concrete suggestions. Philip. Yeah, hello. Um, can you hear me? I can. Yes, okay. I know I'm having some. Other people are shaking their heads. You know. <laughs> All right. Um, what I would like to see is the report. Um, obviously, as that is the discussion right now for the police department, but not just the report, but hopefully we can have some conversation around the report and specifically with the um, chief of police, Chief Livingstone, to kind of understand the steps that were taken in the finalization of the report, who was reporting on it, um, was there multiple eyes on the investigation, or was it just one detective, and then Furthering on that, I would, and then I would say that the structure to the response of the police department, the town, and all other individuals involved is kind of what I would like to see. And that more so being that I have the um, scenario where I'm the co-chair of the Human Rights Commission, and we put out the report, or we put out the um, not the report, that's sorry, uh, um, requests for an investigation. And we did it in a formal way of the police filing. And then we did it in an informal way of sending it to a captain of the police department that is was helping on the CSWG. And we were told that is a good person to go to. And in both ways, we never received kind of like, hey, got the report or got the, um, claim we're looking into it or we'll investigate it these are the steps that we might take or anything in regards to any step of the way of what was happening we we really kind of kept out of the loop on that end for the human rights commission and more so even kept out of the loop when um miss pat brought up uh the two documents from the parents we shared that information through the same means to kind of get into the police um report to make sure that that was received and taken and when we did so we were kind of told that the report was in chief livingstone's desk or on chief livingstone's desk and so we were hoping that that would make it into the report and i believe it has but even kind of an acknowledgement like hey we have it then like why why did i have to send out an email to kind of receive that information that oh the chief is kind of reviewing it so structure of response, I think, is key here. And I think that's kind of what builds the bridge here from this committee, from the 
Human Rights Committee um, and the town council. It's kind of just the response in general. I think we all collectively, at least from viewing town council meeting in the pre past previous month, all have a goal of healing our community and really responding to this incident in a way that uplifts the youth, that makes their voices heard, that as adults on this call collectively respond in a way that is, it's not going to happen in our town. Whoever you are, whatever position you hold, we're not going to allow these instances to continue to happen. So I would like to kind of see also what I guess the town council views these committees being the CSSJC and the Human Rights Commission as like advisors. What what are you looking for from us that you would like to see more of and how can we help each other in that way? And I um, was privy to join that last town council meeting. And as far as being one of the co-chairs from the Human Rights Commission, I think that moving forward is going to be a very strong process and we look forward to any type of response, whether that's a retreat or getting together, however we do, but just collectively trying to not misstep on the response of how do we move forward. Thank you, Philip. So it sounds like the transparency within the process would would help to build trust. I just want to clarify to make sure I understood what what you said about you sent the um, the the letters mm -hmm. to the police, and there wasn't any uh, receipt of we we have these letters. Thank you for sending them. We'll add them to the report, or just we have them. I sent it and the response was that the report is on Chief Stone's desk. To which then I followed up to kind of ask, is it going to be involved or put into the police report? And the response was that they would they would try to. I believe that has happened now. Um, but even that transparency, it kind of was left up in the air, like, is it going to be? So right. thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, Deb. Yeah, um, yeah. just uh, some last kind of thoughts, especially based on some of what our um, my CSJC, CSSJC members have, have spoken about, just to kind of reiterate the importance of, you know, something else that we're looking for. And, you know, Ms. Pat had already kind of talked about it, but really to kind of, you know, I, I, I would like the town council to, to address it, which is the compensation fund, right? I, I don't want it to just, you know, be, set aside as well that's not you know that's something that can come down the road or we haven't discussed it or whatever it would be something to to be addressed at this next meeting around the compensation because the part of it is how you know how is the Amherst nine being taken care of you know how have they been supported emotionally or have they been supported emotionally at all throughout this from July 5th all the way to now October 17th, which is gonna be the next town uh, council meeting. I, I wanna know, you know, what has happened in terms of supporting the Amherst, the, the young people and their families throughout this time. And obviously the compensation fund is a big part of it. So I, I would like that to be part of the conversation and, and really the town council addressing it. And then second, in this report that, that the police um, chief and the police have done, and are, are going to be sharing on the 17th is to kind of, you know, go over, you know, what they investigated, how they investigated, what their outcome is. And if their outcome does, it is that there was some type of, you know, violation or issue, which, you know, obviously me personally, I think there was, but again, based on it, let's say if they do, that it is included in there that besides an apology, which an apology would be important, but also what would be the follow-up steps to remedy the, the problem, right? To, to make sure it doesn't occur again. And also how are those uh, police, the two police that were involved going to be held accountable? So, and, and that, it doesn't mean that they have to say, yes, well, this is gonna be the discipline, so, on, so I don't need that, but what would be the, 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 the way that they would be held accountable so that then we can check in on that later to make sure they were held accountable. 
So those are some of the things too that I'd, I'd like to hear about um, this coming meeting. So let me respond as the person who is responsible for setting the agenda for the town council, okay? Everything you've mentioned tonight is more than one meeting. So we need to decide what we wanna focus on in the time that we have this coming Monday night. And it sounds to me like the most important thing to focus on is getting the updated reports and the report from the police chief and having a discussion about that with some questions and answers. The problem that I'm faced with, and you know, I, I'm the one that has to juggle the many, many demands on the council's calendar, is we also have other things we've got to do and we as a council have not discussed the seven issues that you have raised, even though you have discussed them as a CSSJC. So, and that was part of what we were hoping to do a little bit of last meeting, which didn't happen. And everybody, not everybody, but many of the counselors said what they wanted to see the updated reports and they wanted to see it. So I'm, I am I wanna manage expectations of what we can get done in an hour on Monday night. And I, and that's just a real reality of a meeting this last time at finally at midnight, one of our counselors made a motion to adjourn and we did not finish our agenda. So I appreciate that, Lynn, before we go on to the next person, I just want to ask in general, and maybe it's rhetorical, but um, is there a possibility of the CSSJC, the Human Rights Commission, and the town council or some members trying to figure out process because, um, you know, this is one instance. You know, we, we all hope to live a long life and have many experiences. And so something else is gonna come up. And I think it's important to the residents, um, at least to this resident, that we have a process in which we could it have not only a substantive discussion, because I, I just don't want it to be, you know, a discussion with feelings and everyone emoting and all of that, but getting to some results. And how are we to do that with open meeting law and these different entities that are now at play, thank goodness, because this is what we, we push for to, to broaden, to, to make the table bigger. How do we do that as a community? And so I'm saying that rhetorically because I, I think it's really important and that these, these are meetings that would take place to have results and not just, you know, everyone has their opinion, everyone has emotions, but how do we get to some results that work for this community? So, Ms. Pat. Okay, so, First, I want to say that I also listened in to the town council meeting la uh, last Monday, and I appreciated how productive, robust, and raw it was, you know, for most of the councillors, what they spoke. It really, you know, sent very strong message to those youth and their families that more needs to be done. And I thank each and counselors that really thought about the kids first. I wanna leave it that way. For some reason, I'm struggling to be really positive tonight because I have harsh words to say about three other counselors that I felt that they were gaslighting furthering dividing our community, but I'm not going to go there tonight. I think that when 
I also want to acknowledge that our town is trying in terms of diversity, inclusion, whatever. But I don't think we're really ready about it because our actions shows it. Why is it when it comes to issues that affect BIPOC folks, we don't have enough time? Where are we placing priorities of some of our most vulnerable residents in our town? I watched the last town council where actions were taken about Jones Library. And that is just a building. I watched when the finance director, they came up with a fund to be set aside for capital, capital fund or something like that. And then I, I watched how the cash reserve that was allocated, reparation got the least amount of money allocated to it. I do appreciate the 2 million in 10 years, but I have news. I have uh, news for you guys. Some of us may not even be alive to benefit from it. And I appreciate what AHA committee are doing. I appreciate it, but while I can't speak for all black, black community, but what I'm hearing is that we're being played by the white establishment in this town. Give me a break. There are more than two, you know, couple thousand blacks. And then you wanna be putting in money for the next 10 years to do what? Is that, is that what reparation we're talking about here? So my point is, are we really ready for diversity, for inclusion? Are we really ready for that? When I hear one hour for meeting on Monday, that is not acceptable to me until I believe in action. I believe in quality. We need to get this right. We are almost, next month it will be holiday. People will get distracted. Inaction doesn't mean it will go away. I promise you guys, it's not going to go away. So if there is a way we can move certain issues, furthermore, it will be better. This incident happened July 5th, more than three months. The, these families are part of our community. Why are we treating them less? And I, I sympathize that town council, town council have a lot of issues on the agenda. I really don't care because I think this is important. This is the first time since last year that we have majority BIPOC folks in certain town committee. You guys want us to, you know, want us. And when we participate, we are accused of attacking people. We are, we are accused of being disruptive. We are, we are giving all kinds of names. The one that some people of color don't want to join any committee because some of us don't want talking. We don't want to be pat on the back just to make everybody happy. History will judge each and every one of us what we've done in this town to move our, com our community forward. So my point is, Monday better be productive. I'm not interested in hashing out and just talking feelings, feelings, feelings and stuff. What are we going to do to heal these nine people, nine youth and their families. So Ms. Lynn, if you can have that conversation with a town manager and the police uh, and the chief police, you know, is there going to be apology coming, coming out? You know, uh, uh, is there going to be a strong statement from our town officials? That will, that will mean a lot to the victims, basically. Will the, will the town council direct the town manager to set up compensation funds? At least make a promise that it will happen. Without all this, to, to be honest with you, it's a waste of time. 
and the family, the BIPOC families and the youth, they have made it clear. They don't want to meet with any police officer. They don't want outreach from them. And they don't want to eat pizza with them. They have not apologized. There is no accountability. Nothing has been, they haven't been made whole. Why would they want to? It's like, it's like somebody telling an, uh, asking an abuser to have pizza with them, with, with your victim in domestic violence. It is a power structure right there. So if we, if we really want to do this right, we need to commit time and action. I'm tired of talk, talk, talk for the past three months. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Allegra? So I think that there are some things on our agenda that are like overarching things that we would like to see happen forever when it comes to policing and community safety in Amherst. And I think that there are some things that are more time sensitive, such as the victim compensation fund or the justice compensation fund as, as we discussed last, last meeting and the reports from the police. Um, so I don't know if focusing down onto those two things would be agreeable to members of this committee in order to continue to keep the Amherst Nine at the forefront of things and also to try and, and to have some concrete action around healing for those families. Um, so I guess I don't, I, that would be my suggestion. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to other committee members. So I can just speak for me um, and, and I, uh, appreciate what Ms. Pat brought to the forefront uh, so passionately. The, you know, it's about the young people and the victim compensation fund, whatever we want to call it, um, should be at the forefront of that to begin healing. That to me would show these families that the town does care about their well-being, uh, you know, mental health, uh, uh, what, what, however they might use it uh, to to feel more whole. It, it won't obviously bring justice, um, but it's it's a, a start. And I think that should be first and foremost. And then secondly, what we've been asking for is a clearer view of what occurred on the police's part. And, you know, I found it very problematic that some members of the town council, not only this past one, but in the August one, um, even faced with what Chief Livingstone, if you go back to that meeting in August, Chief Livingstone basically describes from his vantage point what occurred. And it becomes these, these minors that they, that they did something wrong. And yes, they, they were out past midnight, they were, you know, it, it's a, about driving, you know, the law, the state law about them, them driving and they're underage, but they didn't do anything criminal and the police were the adults. And so until we grapple with that scenario as adults ourselves, then we are indeed failing these young people. So, you know, in terms of what I'd like to see, just what Allegra, you know, mentioned that some of this is time sensitive. I'd like to get that over and done with. And then we move on 
the maybe another meeting to talk about what really happens next in terms of uh, uh, adequate training. How does our police force work with the the state guidelines of post, for instance, uh, and any other means to make sure that their interactions with youth don't result in this in this same thing. So that's that's what I see as as priorities for for the hour. I do think an hour is too little time. But um, it, in terms of priorities, that's what I see. I'd like to hear from our group. Uh, Freke, you haven't spoken all night. You've been uh, more quiet than usual. Um, I've been listening to the conversation and um, everyone has said a lot and there wasn't much for me to add. Um, I'd like to thank the council members who are here tonight and I look forward to um, the meeting on Monday. Um, I don't think we'll ever have enough time, but I do think we should prioritize and um, reducing it at least to what is more time sensitive would be the appropriate way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in our group? Yeah, I mean, again, yeah, I think that the, the compensation fund, the healing for the Amherst Nine, um, but also the report, uh, the outcome of that report and what's going to come out from, from that report. I'm not saying trainings and long-term stuff. I'm just talking immediate in terms of accountability of the two police officers. Pam? There are two participants who have raised their hands. Um, um, are they council members? Um, one. one is Council Dar Dorothy Pam. Yes. Oh, okay. So they're they're part of our group. Thank you for for letting me know. I do want to mention right quick though. There's models for compensation funds, and actually Pam Young uh, looked uh, up some of these models. So there is a reference point for communities uh, providing uh, such compensation funds. Are you going to bring them in, Pam? Okay, thank you. So Pam mentioned Dorothy, Pam, yeah, okay. Thank you, Pam. Dorothy? And someone, if you could turn off your microphone, I know that's, I do that all the time too. Okay. Dorothy, yes. All right. <clears throat> so I, I have a suggestion. So many of the things you've mentioned, as, as Lynn will point out, require discussion, debate, and take a long time. And so the question is, what can be done in an hour? And perhaps the first step could be taken in an hour, which would be some statement of apology. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. I mean, I, I'm, I am struggling with that as Ms. Pat is like an hour. I mean, what is really going to be accomplished in an hour? You see what I'm saying? I'm like, isn't there any way to have more time to really get in, into this? Because how are we going to discuss everything, even those two priority items in an hour? Agreed, that is the struggle. Um, I, I, to I totally agree with the struggle, but I don't have a great resolution, although one of the suggestions that was made on Monday, to, uh, the third, was the idea of a retreat in which there would be a whole lot more time. A joint retreat, retreat with the Council, CSSJC, and um, the Human Rights Commission. So, so, what, what, so what does that mean? mean though i guess yeah i i guess i would need more clarity in terms of what that yeah. means and because I, we obviously we haven't uh, done anything more than just it's only been discussed and it's not been outlined as what would it mean and it means a you know probably an all-day commitment on behalf of all of the members of our different groups yeah 
And no, yeah, I mean, I get that, but I, I guess my question would be, you know, obviously there's this pressing matter of, you know, the Amherst line, which, which I know we at the CSSJC are very committed to, which is really getting them some resolution, right? Even if they're never going to feel whole because of what happened on July 5th, but at least a, addressing, you know, their healing and obviously, you know, what happened by the police and accountability. So there's that. And then, so are we able, I guess I'm, I'll, I'll pose a question to you, Lynn. Are we able to get through that in an hour? <laughs> and then obviously, yeah, the retreat, you know, because I, yeah, and then the retreat would come afterwards, I guess, which that's fine. But addressing the Amherst Nine, would we, could we do that in an hour? Whether it could be discussed during that hour and a resolution that we come to at by the end of the hour, I doubt the second part, we could start the discussion. But I think then the question is, are we going to take any time to look at the updated reports and the report from the police? And if we are, then I've got I've, I've got an agenda problem. And I've already I, I I'm just going to tell you, I've already thrown three things off the agenda that I can can throw off and wait without consequences for subsequent things. And I mean, I'm just trying to balance everybody's demands and needs at this point. And I, I hear you. I'm just trying to balance it. That's all. So could the, the reports would have to come out for, uh, in time for it to be included in the packet, right? So right. Could, the, could the reports be sent to the chairs um, or somehow can the can the reports can we see the reports and then have some maybe some some questions from our group for you all to address but I you know in in many ways what Dorothy um, uh, presented you know, if there are one to two things that we could agree to accomplish within this next town council meeting, or have you all, you know, work with us to accomplish for the town council meeting. So Dorothy mentioned an apology, but you know, I I, I have to go back to what Ms. Pat said for it to have meaning for these families, they've asked for a victim compensation fund. So no matter how we interpret that interaction, these young people and their families feel that they have been harmed. So, you know, if we're again, serious as a community about trying to provide some healing to these young people and their families, Give them the victim compensation fund, you know, and have the, the council uh, vote and agree on that. Um, that's an hour discussion, I'm sure. So our work responsibility. Okay, so the concept would be that the reports would be completed. They would be in the packet. As soon as they're in the packet, they can be sent to all of the chairs of any of the committees, okay? Uh, and that all that we would do is ask questions. Now, I, I just want to point out, this will be the first time counselors are seen, and they're going to have questions as well, okay? Um, that's just part of it. Uh, whether or not we will be prepared to have a full discussion about a victim compensation fund in on, at, on, by Monday is, I think, a big, a big ask. ask. The question is whether we'd be prepared to vote. And I will just tell you, I don't think so. Because it's not, it's, it, there's a lot of legalities, uh, including the fact that right now, the legislature, we would have to go to the legislature for special legislation to give money to individuals. And all several of you are aware of that because that is what we've had to also say to the AHRA. Uh, and um, in a meeting that I held with them, and then we shared the protocol with the council. 
Um, the, at this point, it is not legal for the town of Amherst to give individuals money. So I understand that. And, you know, the, the victim compensation fund could be crafted different ways. I hope we have uh, Pam Young and with some guidance here as well. But it's it's about accountability. So and not reparations. And I, I'm just, you know, it, it sounds like it's going back into uh, not only the issue of, of legality, but um, not wanting to and I'm not saying you personally, Lynn, but the 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 council, the town, trying to you know make uh, the the youth and the families whole. So I think that needs to be at the center of the discussion. However, we could do that. The other thing, and then I'll I'll go to my other members here. I think we have to choose. Either we discuss at this next meeting the victim compensation fund or the police report. It's going to be as as you're saying, even with more extended time committee, it might be very difficult to have a discussion about both of those things at the same time. So, I'm not one for retreats personally. It's not something I like to do because I've been to too many DEI diversity workshop trainings. I've given them myself. And unless there are some uh, real goals and actionable type of steps, I would not be enthusiastic and spend in a whole day just to have a conversation. <laughs> that... Okay, so I, I'm just saying, so we, if, if any of that should, should be part of this discussion, we have to talk about, so what are we getting out of it in terms of process and for the community? And I'm not going to speak for the rest of the group, but me personally. So I'll, I'll go to, uh, I, is it Allegra next? I don't know, but. <laughs> so. Allegra, Allegra first. Uh, so I think my, uh, I'm just trying to be a realist here and I'm thinking like we have now been talking about what we're going to talk about at this meeting for over an hour. So I don't know how we're gonna talk about a topic in an hour, um, but I think what whatever topic we choose to talk about for an hour, what I, wanna, what I would ask the town council to do is agree to have further discussions about it before a two month window has gone by again. You know, I think I think part of the frustration I was having sitting in on the meeting on October 3rd was that it sounded as if many of the counselors wanted to have discussions and wanted to have updates and wanted to hear more about it and wanted to discuss things more. And they, you know, but it, time has passed, there are other things, we, we're all busy people and I just, I don't want the message to be, we're gonna keep kicking the can down the road and nothing ever come to fruition because we're busy discussing, discussing things and not actually acting. And so, so I guess my hope would be that whatever we do discuss, whatever does not get discussed, gets put onto an agenda in the near future for town council to further discuss before we discuss it with them at another discussion. I think. <laughs> I think I got that train. <laughs> well said, Allegra. <laughs> I, I, and it, 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 the council does, just as you have meetings and you have had very, very intense and thorough discussions of all of this, the council has not. And that's what I think is part of the stopping. It, that, that's what's blocking us right now as a council. And I... So, yeah. Okay. And when you say what's blocking you is the council, it's the process. Is that it's, what you're It's telling? the time to have the discussion. Okay. It's, it's not, it, I mean, there's process, you know, we, I mean, I hate to say this, but if you're working with government, you can process people to death. Thank you. I, I agree with that frustration with government, okay? But the reality is it's time to have the discussions. And that's what I think the council has not had is time. And I, you know, 
um, a couple months ago, I tried to add another meeting in and I, I got shut down on that one fast. I real quick and then go to Miss Pat. I think one of the things that's at the core of this and the frustration for us is that, you know, we come out of the CSWG and now we're the CSSJC and it's like, we are supposed to give guidance regarding these issues. And it's like, you know, we're, we're not being utilized and trusted to have, um, to, to uh, suggest, you know, uh, what the community needs, what uh, and how to meet those needs. And so I think that's also a little bit part of our frustration because we're trying to authentically and sincerely fulfill this role. And um, how does that work and operate when we, when Ms. Pat has been in contact with these families, they trust her, that is what we wanted uh, in terms of the having a committee like this, someone that could, you know, do that type of outreach. You know, people pay thousands of dollars for that type of outreach, and she's done it here because she's a trusted member of the community. They went to her. And so, you know, then how does the council now take and utilize what we've presented? in also a sincere and authentic way. Um, I, I think there's a, the, like you say, it's, there's a bit of this standstill, but we want to be valued for, for what we're bringing to mm -hmm. the council uh, and what we've been placed in uh, to do. Right. So, so, I mean, let, let me just, you know, D, you and I've talked before, I think Allegra and Anna and you and I spoke about uh, any number of ways to proceed. But again, one of the things that, and maybe I, I, I accept full responsibility for not writing a letter people one, wanted to use, but one of the things I was trying to do was I say, you know, here's where we are in each of these. Here's what the council can do. Here's what some other group, maybe CSSJC needs to do next. Let's acknowledge this, let's do this. I was in fact trying, I'm sorry if I'm frustrated. I, maybe it's my time to just be frustrated. I was trying to in fact help us figure out a path forward. And if I didn't do it well, I accept that. But I'm trying to figure out how we can take the different steps that you all pointed out in your letter, some of many of which, not all, but many of which came from the CSWG and you referenced that in the letter and having read those reports thoroughly and developed the initial matrix, I, you know, recognize them as being directly from the CSWG. How can we take those pieces and the thing that would be, I think most useful for us coming from CSSJC is this figure working with us and figuring out who's going to do what to move this forward. And on, in the process, this event occurred and it's kind of become the only thing that people want to talk about because they can't move on without that. And so I'm trying to figure out a way. I hear you. I, I actually, I think it's a great opportunity. So I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I really see it as an opportunity to not only do what we've been, you know, to it's, it's talk, uh, walk in the walk, right? This is our mm -hmm. opportunity in this town to, to actually do what we have been for the past year, uh, uh, over a year, saying that we are committed to and so here is a group that has that commitment and wants to get us to, you know, kind of stand in the in in that that space and do what we said we were going to do as a community. This is our moment. 
And so I really, you know, as, as a person who really dearly loves the people in this community, let's do that. Let's figure out a way to get past this by doing what's right. And so I'm, I'm going to stop on that because I, I, I go to tears quickly, but um, I, I truly believe that this, this is our moment to stand in those shoes, to stand here and, and do what's right. All what we've said, all the stuff we've written up so many times. I just looked at the DEI website, all of that. Let's do it. Miss Pat. So a couple of observations. So I want to say that, Lane, I watched last week town council where you expressed frustration in my culture. It's actually a strength. That's part of leadership. Tonight I said that too, there's nothing wrong with that. For somebody from another culture, it took me a long time. Even today, I still struggle with that. Like if you show your emotion, people misinterpret it it wasn't a weakness at all. That's the way it's supposed to be. I appreciate you know, your leadership. I appreciate everybody's time. Um, I know your position is not easy. This is what I'm thinking, okay? In terms of apology, if apology is sent to us, I don't think it needs to be rehashed at the meeting on Monday unless if we have questions or we, you know, it's not strong enough. I think if we can get commitment from the town council that they will indeed um, support or um, that they support um, the compensation fund, I'm not expecting a vote on Monday, obviously, because people need to discuss it. You know, we have to honor town council process. But what I'm looking for is like a commitment. Like this is what the families and the youth want. Okay. If we if I if I hear majority of the town council willing to continue the discussion in your future meetings, I think it will give the youth and their families some hope. I also at the report, you know, if it can be out i'm repeating what in other folks you know for us to read it will alleviate a lot of anxiety and curiosity about instead of going into the meeting and then having the you know the police chief discussing what he wrote we want to say it, you know send it ahead of time it will save a lot of time i think yeah um I think for me, and I can't speak for everyone, um, I'm not feeling the retreat, unfortunately. Uh, people who know me very well, personally, professionally, when I commit to people, um, I try to do my best. These families, majority of BIPOC folks, you know, chose me to speak for them, obviously, because they are protecting you know, their kids, confidentiality, and they should, you know, that's the law, is their right. And I wouldn't feel comfortable going into any retreat this year mm -hmm. until these families are made whole. And the last thing I wanna say is that compensation does happen. People do get paid with special education. And I know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be specific or mentioning names. The school system have, you know, paid for compensation in different forms. Of course, sometimes you, it will go through hearing. The school get ordered to do X, Y, and Z. So why is that different, compensation different? When, when I hear that, you know, um, our town cannot pay people out individually, I'm like, hmm. What about settlement? You know, what about, you know, people who feel, you know, for whatever reason, settlements happens. Is it the name that we're giving to it? You know, if we call it settlement, would that be different? So I'm not, I'm not sold uh, with the fact that you know, our town cannot pay out, you know, money individually. Special education does that. 
in different ways. I, I've, I've known I where is... the school system has, you know, asked some parents to find alternative services, you know, for the care, you know, for their, I don't want to get into too much. Mm -hmm. And the parents are giving the money to pay for the services. It has happened. I know what I'm talking about because uh, I'm a special parents, education advocate. So I know what I'm talking about. Thank right. you. Right. And and Pat, I appreciate it. My son is a special ed. My student. son too. Yeah. I, so yeah. <laughs> and My I've been at the, I've been at those tables wondering why I wasn't getting this, that, or the other thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the disadvantage you did of being black. Yeah. So um, but I that. The question is, are, were those funds paid directly to the people or were they paid to some service or some school for the people to attend those schools? I don't want to go into details that are different types of settlement and, you know, that was made um, that people cannot discuss. That yeah. Parents have been paid directly, you know, you know for services that re they requested. And yes, it has okay. done directly financially. Yes. Okay. But I don't want to say too much i i never ask yeah. anybody to reveal yeah anything that would yes. be personal yep so and i i think to to miss pat's point i think it is the the job of the town council and um of course our attorneys to figure out how that is to occur just like they advise for the ahra mm -hmm. um the town council, of course, has to discuss it and approve it. So that's that's the town council's role. But um, I think that is that is the town's job to figure out how that is to happen. We just need the will. Uh, Philip. Yeah, I will echo a lot of what Miss Pat says. Thank you, Miss Pat. I guess for taking some words out of my mouth that I was going to say, um, but. I will say that having the report sent ahead of time, I think will save a lot of time and easy to then just pick out questions that individual members have for the report. Um, sounds great. And then a commitment to look into a compensation from fund from the town council, I think is reasonable. I think that it is difficult to try and vote on anything, especially within an hour time frame. So that commitment would be great and continued conversation. I do want to point out though and think that this conversation and this type of interaction, I was at the meeting last Monday. I saw how long that was and how frustrating that was for town council um, members and people. Having these conversations, having been brought into it, you know, there was a suggestion to have us be come into the town council meeting November 7th. That would have pushed the issue way back further. So I really appreciate us trying to get this issue as a top priority. And I do see that being taken. And so I really do appreciate that. And I will say that where I may disagree with Miss Pat is that I would be open to a retreat, but I also went and thinking about it and listening to it maybe how the town has finance committees um whatever committees it is maybe we make a standing committee to look at this issue then to bring back to the overall town council because i do agree with um he as well that being a part of a retreat that is just kind of a kumbaya type of retreat as opposed to a actionable retreat is very different and i would like to see an actionable type of either retreat or standing committee, whatever that is. And, and I will say that when we, when AHRA uh, or what became AHRA came to us with that, that's we created a committee within a finite period uh, with a charge to come back to us. And um, then once they started talking about compensation, uh, we provided them with the process by which we would have to get to that point and then set up a time that uh, Michelle just, 
Um, and the whole committee uh, actually met with our town town attorney to talk about some of the issues around that. And it was, I think, very informative. I wasn't there for that part of it. I was there to just talk about the process. And um, that I think was very useful for them. So thank you. Uh, and I think it is nine, but uh, I wanna get to everyone's comments. An ongoing fund would be preferable so we wouldn't have to you know, do this again, right? So some type of ongoing fund, like with the AHRA, that um, when unfortunate incidences like this occur, then it would already be set up. So I, the process wouldn't just be for a singular incident. Um, Deb, Deb, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because now I see Michelle's hand up too, but yes, yes Deb. So um, yeah, time is, is is passing. I have my thirteen year old. I need to get to. So you know, <laughs> hopefully this is wrapping up. If not, I'm I'm leaving in like ten minutes. Basically, I'm just letting you all know. So um, so so uh, in terms of a, of a, of a way forward, I I heard police report. I heard reports. It should only be the police report. That's what we're interested in in finding out about, right? So Pamela's report can wait until the next meeting or what have you. If Pamela, you know, is going to do a report. So the police report is what we're, what we're interested in. So the police report is what we focus on. Second, as everybody has said, in terms of a message to the to the Amherst Nine, it would be in terms of, you know, yes, an apology. We hear you. We're committed to you. Right. You all can do all that. And in terms of a compensation fund, do a timetable. Right. Explain the process, do a timetable and say exactly what you can do by when. And if there are resources that are available right now that's not tied into the compensation fund, put that in the message, right? So as Ms. Pat said and others said, there's other ways to go around supporting the, these youths and their families without it needing to be the legislative compensation fund, which might take time. Okay, I get that. But timetable it, right? So all of that can happen, even the message or what have you, even before the meeting. And then at the meeting, we want to talk about the report. Okay, so in terms of an hour, those are the things that, that can happen in an hour. And then lastly, in terms of a retreat, I mean, I, I have heard folks say not interested. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing if there are object if there are some actionable items to get to, because I'm not, I'm, you know, I want to know, right, what our structure is at CSSJC and how we work with the town council. What are we supposed to do? Because I've, I've I'm hearing there's a lot of confusion, right? So a retreat where we actually are there talking about some of these issues, whether we need to do bylaws, whether we need to do whatever might be beneficial, right? So actionable items. HRC needs that too, because HRC is saying that, that there's certain powers that they don't have in place. So having the meeting with town council members, us and HRC with some actionable items at the end of the day, I would not be opposed to it. And, and the other part is, I don't know a lot of y'all. I know some of you have, have all these relationships with the town councilors outside of of, of work, uh, of um, uh, these meetings. I'm sorry, I have a 13 year old, I have an 18 year old, I have a work, I have my elderly mom, I have a lot of stuff going on in my life and I don't have a lot of time to be out and about doing this, that and the third. So yes, a retreat where we'd be there for a day with some actual and meeting and discussing some of these things might be beneficial so that then when we go to these meetings, we actually know each other and we can actually have these types of conversations at hopefully a deeper level, right? as opposed to a, a lot of times superficial or sometimes feeling antagonistic, right? So I, I'm just throwing that out there um, that some of us members would actually benefit from that. Thank you, Deb. I, I And appreciate the concrete items that, yes, that sounds doable for, for the, the next town council meeting. And I'm gonna agree with you uh, about uh, again, if it's actionable items that we're working on in a retreat, I'd be down for that. So Michelle. Thank you for giving me a quick opportunity. I'll make this really quick. Um, I really just want to build on actually what Deb just said. A lot of what Deb just said is, is exactly what I was going to say is for me as a counselor listening in on this, um, it's become really clear. Um, and I, I just... Ms. Pat, really want to genuinely thank you for being the person that has been liaison to these families. And um, I think that that's a really critical role and, and a person that we really need to appreciate that role that you're playing. Um, 
And it's really become clear to me that what these families feel would be the most restorative piece of this is to have this victims or justice compensation fund. And so um, from my perspective as a counselor, it feels like we need to sort of head like like uh, deal with really deal with that head on that request. Um, and what I would ask um, Lynn um, and similar to actually what you were saying, Lynn, is I think that it would be really helpful for counselors to have an understanding of what a victim compensation fund is, um, in what other purposes is it used, whether it, it has been used locally or in other places throughout the country, if there are other models for it. Um, I think an educational component, because I think some counselors might hear it and really just immediately kind of be unsure about it or um, maybe have opposition to it if they don't have all of the information. Um, and then also adding to that, I think having legal advice is really important. So we don't want to spin our wheels. I feel like we really have to have um, a, an understanding from um, a, a legal opinion about what the town can and cannot do, um, because there may be ways to do this that aren't direct payments. I think it's sort of grasping the the essence of what is being asked to make um, the youth and their families feel whole in this situation is what's most important. Um, and then I see the retreat separately, and I've talked to Lynn a bit about this already, um, if there were to be a retreat or a time where we would have to spend together, it would be, as Deb said, to really build the relationships and talk about how we want to be in relationship with one another. All three, two committees, the town council, um, how do we want to be in relationship, building trust, building ways that we can support one another, that we can fulfill our missions and our charge um, as uh, uh, um, human beings and as these entities that we make up. Um, and so that's where I would see having a retreat being really important um, or maybe really valuable to, to kind of frame some of that out with some really clear objectives. So thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Allegra. Um, thank you, Michelle, for that. I just, um, what you said kind of, I read this article today actually called Reparations for Police Violence. And it did talk not only about direct payments and it did cite two different cities, both Chicago and Philadelphia have made some reparations and what what was included in both of those was a formal apology on, on behalf of the town or the police department in, in some cases, both um, an educational component. So teaching, teaching the kids in Chicago about what had gone on with the police department and how they had been torturing black men into giving false confessions and um, making a place available for people to go and, and get healing, whether that was through mental health services, job training services. So not unlike the youth empowerment and the BIPOC cultural centers that CSWG has, um, has recommended and, and that we are still hoping will come to fruition. So, so I do think, and, and I like that it frames it in the, in the way of reparations thinking as well about the work that the assembly is doing um, so I just wanted to mention that as, as an article that was helpful for me in thinking about this. And, and, and I think that the families are asking for all of these things in, in a way. So I do think there is some precedence out there for funds and for apologies and for services. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Allegra. Um, Pam, is it a possibility of adding that article to the last part of the packet or are we able to add things retrospectively like that? Um, I do not know, but I could certainly, if Allegra would send it to me, um, send it um, out to the rest of the committee. 
Uh, I, I would just have to check on the open meeting laws about um, adding additional, I, I don't know the answer. Or it could just be sent to the committee, but I think it would be helpful. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Allegra. Or I could send it to the packet for the town council meeting. Uh, in general, if, a, if an item has been mentioned within a meeting, it can be added after the fact. Thank you. At least th I think that's what I've learned from Athena, who is my expert on this issue. <laughs> Um, so I, I Miss Pat, I'm going to uh, give it to you, but I also want to suggest it is 921. Uh, we had at least uh, two more items on the agenda that are uh, particularly important to budget um, that we table that for the next meeting. Um, and I'm I don't know how the rest of us feel about that, but uh, if that's Yep. Yep. We're tabling the last two items. <laughs> Frankie, I need a thumbs up or thumbs down. What's going on? All right. Thank you. Okay, Miss Pat. You know, um, I feel hopeful with all the discussions. I feel that people spoke from their heart tonight. One thing I forgot to mention about the compensation fund, the idea is to have the town select an organization, have that organization handle the, <clears throat> the payment. It will be similar to what the town is already doing with um, housing, uh, subsidy, whatever, like have an, another organization handle the money not the town paying individuals directly, but have the town pay the money to organization, the organization then dispose, dispose the money. That's what I wanted to mention, if that makes sense to people. Yes. It, it does make sense. What, what those funds generally do is pay whoever's providing the service or the housing or whatever, and they pay directly to the landlord or they, that kind of thing. No, what I'm trying to say is that the town, you know, select an organization, yeah. you know, pay them, you know, uh, administrative fees, but then that organization then pays the MS9 cash for them to do whatever, healing means to individual youth and their families is what I meant. Because I know that organizations, they do get administrative fees when they you know, help with you know, programming in our town. I know that, that's what I meant. I don't mean like the organization paying for therapists directly. We don't want that. Um, they don't want that. Okay, so it sounds like, uh those are things as as Michelle had mentioned um would also have to be looked at with um the attorney and how that might uh how that might work in terms of you know process as we said okay uh Anika oh, having trouble unmuting myself so <clears throat> well thank you all um this has definitely been informative. Uh, <clears throat> and I do agree that, you know, it, it definitely sounds like we will need a thorough, if not legal review, at least advice, because the way that um, compensation is, is being suggested, um, you know, I just, in my non expert opinion, see all types of red tape. Um, and absolutely just from what I understand is within our purview or ability. Um, and I also, you know, I felt uh, very similar and I guess maybe in, in certain ways I do when I hear retreat, um, but you know, it is true that many of us do not know each other aside from maybe faces and often that, you know, in, case, in many ways we do not. Um, but I also think that, you know, um, we also begin with, holding space at really just how much frustration there is around this. I think that you have some people when, you know, talking about the, the youth involved here, the frustration and what's behind it. 
um, comes from decades and eons of, you know, um, these type of instances going on. And I think, you know, uh, the conversation, at least I'm not aware, and I haven't heard one person in council discuss a debate on whether or not uh, police misconduct or brutality exists, but more, what are we dealing with with this incident? And I, you know, hear that frustration, I'll admit, and I've shared with one of your members when I hear uh, Amherst 9 being used, it just like it, Oof, it, it just stirs my soul because I think of the Little Rock Nine and I think of these nine black youth, there was no question of who they were. There was no question whatsoever. And they're there with their city, state and that national guard in front of them. Basically, we hate you, you're not welcome. This is pre-civil rights. And you know, to think that all of this frustration we're here now when this is being used for to describe this incident aside from rhyming. And I think that this is also something just dealing with where, where that is coming from. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of us just speaking for myself, I, you know, we haven't seen reports. We haven't, you know, seen anything. There's, you know, conflict. And I don't think anyone is doubting that there are people hurting and that obviously we all know, I think all of us know here, we do not need to be lawyers to know that youth have rights. Um, you know, so I do hope that there are, are further discussions, not only move us to paths where processes are there. So in addition to getting to know each other, in addition to having retreats, we have clear paths of where do we go from here? You know, so we're not having discussions on whether something exists in the world or not, because we know it does um, and really can direct us to, is this what's going on? Did this happen? And how do we deal with it? And right now we do not have those, those systems in place and we're dealing with a lot of state law. So um, my hope aside from that is we really just have some clear facts and we know how we can proceed, whether that is compensation, you know, further conversation or um, whatever that is. But with that, I would, you know, thank you all again. And also I just, I do wanna add Ms. Um, Ms. Pat, um, you know, I, I've had very few conversations with you, but it's very obvious that you are a very caring person. And I hope that, and I can see that you care deeply and I hope that, you know, you and, with uh, Pamela Young, especially, who I'm so grateful that we have with us here, can really be able to facilitate. So I'm sure whatever would need to happen cannot happen just within your charge. You know, that's, that's impossible um, to make sure that though we need to protect the youth and their families, there is someone where we can actually, like if it does come to, uh, whether it is checks or whatever it is, obviously they have to be written to someone. So, um, you know, I just, I hope that we can move from a circular conversation more to facts. And um, I do have to leave shortly too, but um, I wish you all a great night and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, Anika. Um, are there any other comments, questions, clarifications? Lynn, I hope that this gives you I'm sure uh, much more <laughs> than you were expecting, but actually something you know useful. I, I think from each of our members, um, from Philip to Allegra to Deb to uh, Miss Pat, uh, some concrete um, request, right, in which to um, frame the uh, the conversation. Uh, I I really do want to say thank you. This is um, these kinds of conversations for me are educational. They're challenging. I I have to tell you on um, Tuesday after our meeting, when in fact I did cry at the meeting, uh, Pamela shared with me that she thinks that people. She does that when she cares deeply about something. And so 
I I thank you for appreciating that side of this as well. I also really want to thank you. This, these are the kinds of conversations that need to happen in Amherst. And I am more than willing to return any time that you would like me to. And you can continue to, you know, say it the way you say it, Pat, <laughs> Miss Pat, <laughs> as she does in my District 2 meetings. Um, so thank you. I appreciate it greatly. Pam has her hand up. Yes. So I um, know that you're thinking about adjourning, but before you adjourn, I just wanted to point out that there's a one attendee with their hand raised. And so you might want to have um, public comment again before you adjourn. Thank you, Pam, for the reminder of public comment. Yes, because we definitely want to, to do that. So I appreciate it. Um, all right, you're going to let them in. Thank you for waiting so long <laughs> to comment. Yeah. Hi, hi, this is Vera Cage. I'll um, be very quick. Um, 12 Long Meadow Drive, Department 21, Amherst. Um, I want to refer everyone to um, an article that came out today in the Daily Hampshire Gazette um, front page written by um, Dusty Christensen. And um, I share it on my Facebook um, in case um, you can't access it, um, the, the print. But it talks about um, uh, doing public records requests um, on the behalf of the newspaper for the police department. Um, and, you know, it took about two years and um, because there were so many appeals um, because the Amherst police um, weren't forthcoming or transparent, and they redacted a lot of what they were able to, to furnish with respect to um, discipline and internal um, investigations. So um, personally, as a resident of Amherst, I'm not, and you know, elsewhere too, um, police are professional liars. <laughs> um, they're in court taking the stand, lying. Um, I've been in the courtrooms. I've um, witnessed this you know, play out. So I, I'm not naive to the fact that um, police lie. And um, I am concerned that, um, and I appreciate um, Deborah's comment about um, pulling out the fact that, you know, um, our DEI officer does is not privy to any reports, to any interview, to any work product that produced the report or to you know, so 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 that's a missed opportunity, I think, on the town manager's part um, to to make this position so disempowering. Um, the fact that she's not at the table during collective bargaining with the police, you know, when you're talking about police union contracts, that is such a, a key um, department with regards to safety in this community. I think that's a missed opportunity. Um, the other point was, um, I appreciate Mr. Miller's report on the Crest program. I, you know, former organizer, always will be an organizer. I, I hope that there's um, some focus towards community building and prevention and not just Crest responding to phone calls that deploy them, that we are able to um, use this as an opportunity to organize and to do this participatory action research projects with students, with parents, um, with community members to bring people to the table, provide stipends, give incentives, do, do that work towards building that teen empowerment center, the BIPOC center. These are all things that are interconnected and related and you have talent at the table. Appreciate Ms. Pat um, saying that. And you have a phenomenal time where the town of Amherst, that you know, you have black women leadership and the town council needs to follow the lead of these black women who are the moms of these town of, of our children, you know? So let's focus on trusting the, the, the people that are appointed to make recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments in the audience, Pam? Nope. 
Okay. So if there are no other further comments from our group or questions, uh, we do have to set a date for our next meeting. Um, and then we can make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so all the, the council, town council members, thank you again. I hope this has been helpful. I, I think for our group, it's it's been helpful. Um, and we look forward to the next town council meeting. So CSSJC people, do we want to set a meeting tonight? Yeah. Yes, I have a suggestion. Is it possible? Let me throw this out to people. Does Wednesday, uh, every second Wednesday, does that work for everybody? What is today? Today is second Wednesday, correct? Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Just for my own sanity. I like consistency. Like, yeah. It's, it is helpful. I have one point of consideration, which okay. is that if we met the first Wednesday next month, it would be before the public forum for budget. So if we were thinking we might want to present a letter at that forum. When is the forum again? The forum is November 7th. So if we met on the second, which would be the first Wednesday instead of the second Wednesday, then potentially we could have something to go to that meeting with and read or submit via yeah. public comment um, so that, you know, we're saying as a committee, you know, at least funding for CRESS and DEI, we would like to see these things. Um, okay. So that works for me. Um, what about the rest of the group? It's tight for me. Okay. So that's November 2nd is yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, it's very tight for me. Because Something. if it's the ninth, then it's after the meeting. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we can't not submit something post meeting, yeah. but just yeah. But we have so so you all are saying like um, so are we meeting every other week or you all are just saying every second Wednesday like once a month? Every second, yeah. I don't want to meet every other week. Okay, the rest so of the year. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, then I can't help. <laughs> so either or for me, but it sounds like Miss Pat, you're only able to meet on the ninth, you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if we submitted a letter um after the fact, it wouldn't have as much impact. But if we submitted it before, um we could send it to Pam. And how would we do that to not violate open meeting law? Ms. Pat? Okay. My understanding of supporting DEI and, and Deborah help, help me out if I miss the mark, is that we solicit input from them. What are their needs in their department? You know, do you need, um, how yeah um, office manager you know you know whatever you you know and then we help to advocate for those items it looks like it's you know my understanding is each department come up with their priorities that they submit to the town manager or you know finance committee our role i'm hoping that we will go to the finance committee meeting and if we need to advocate or whatever during public uh, comments, we can do that, that this is what we think Chris need, this is what we think the AI department need, but it needs to come from our two administrators. It's my understanding. Deborah, you can chip in. No, 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 okay. I mean, I, yeah, I don't have anything else to add, yeah, yeah. that would, Definitely. Yeah, we don't we don't do the budget. We don't we don't come up with the budget. Yeah. Like I know CSWG, you know, we have budget that we did, but things have changed a lot since that time. So I think, you know, our two administrators need, 
you know, know what their needs are, if they can communicate that to us, then we can, you know, support, advocate for, for the funding. So then we write a so, letter of support. Wait, the, the, oh, actually, so like I said, I, unfortunately, I have to go. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. We need to go. Um, so the, the last thing, like you all heard when I was saying to Lynn that for the 17th, I already have this other community meeting that I'm meeting from 6 to 7.30. So I don't know if we're doing any presentation or anything. So don't the, don't put me on for any of that because obviously I'm going to try to, you know, join whenever my other meeting is done. Um, so, you know, I just want to put that out there. Okay. But so, yeah, keep me- November you you the second and the ninth you're available i'm i'm available either of those so okay, just let great. me know which whichever one you all decide on okay all right folks it's been real <laughs> thank you right, good night go. thank you so if if all and pamela can email our group like this is their priorities then we can advocate for them okay Pam, i don't think we need to meet up. i don't think we need to meet before the uh finance committee uh, uh public comments. Okay. Yeah. At the leadership meeting um, that we had um, earlier, maybe on Monday, uh, Sean uh, Mangano said that he would be sending out uh, forms and um, for each of the departments with the proposed budget. So we haven't gotten that information, but it's going to be forthcoming. And then um, there will be an opportunity for each of the department um, um, managers to review and make suggestions. Um, so that's that process is starting to take place, but it hasn't taken place yet. And I'm assuming that it would be completed before the November meeting date, but obviously this is my first time going through the budget process. But I know that Sean um, I have plans to sit down and meet with him. I met with him when I first arrived, but plans to sit down and meet with him again to, re to talk about a budget for DEI. I think, the, um, I think that Sean and Paul put together a placeholder budget for this first year, knowing that um, you know, there would be additional things and we would really learn what the needs were as we went through the year. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. then, you know, it sounds like uh, we'll see that later, or will I guess that'll be presented at the that meeting. Pam, do you think? So I, I'm um, I am unsure what's presented at that meeting, but I can certainly try to find out the sequence of events and let the um, let the committee know. I do think that it is incumbent upon Earl and I to sort of figure out what our needs are. And he, I mean, I think, you know, this it's a first year, so you're really trying to figure it out um, as you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously he's a lot further along in the development of uh, Crest, so, he has really identified needs that he's, um, you know, that he's already been observing. And for me, it's, you know, with only 90 days in on the job, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that budget should look like. And we'll build in some things for as far as capacity. But, you know, I, I don't, I, I actually think the conversation next year this time would be more important than the conversation this year at this time because we just we don't know exactly okay. where where we are headed okay well it would help i it, for us if we're writing a letter of support to know this is how much is allotted and this is what their needs are mm -hmm. but um at any rate we are uh think kind trying to think through it because we want to definitely support DEI and, and CRESS in our capacity as a CSSJC. So is this something we need to uh, work on and send, you know, have maybe Miss Pat and Allegra work on it and then send um, to Pam? Um, no? Okay. No. So, Family, you know, you know what your needs are. All we need to know is you know, what you identify you need. And then we, uh, the coaches then write letter, okay. you know, to support, 
you know, your, your, that's our role. All right. You come up with the budget. You know, you tell us what you need and then we support, we advocate for you. That is not guaranteed that they will fund everything, but right. that's why you have us here. That's one of our support for your department and for you. Yeah. So to tell you the truth, I think they need four staff there. Even with the, with the office manager, it's not enough because of the scope of the work involved. You know, will be, even though we recommended three staff, yeah. you know, the DEI director, the assistant, and office manager, I think they need one more person. So, so, well, Allegra, so Allegra and I can work on a draft. If there are ideas, Philip, uh, Freke, Miss Pat, mm -hmm. send them to Pam and then she'll send them to us. Mm -hmm. That's the open meeting law process. Mm -hmm. um, good. Uh, November, and 9th, November 9th. November 9th is the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So. Good night, right. everyone. Well, no. So we'll well, not yet. Sorry. To adjourn, please. Yes. Second day. Second day. Okay. So Allegra made the motion. Ms. Pat seconded. All in favor? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to have dinner. Everyone, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great meeting. Great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dorothy. Thank yes. you, everybody. See you on Monday. Mm -hmm.